This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That is uh, the toll-free number. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in the studio tonight, it is me. And Lauren Rumpler. Also, special guest co-host Rob Mathias is with us. Welcome, Rob. How's Welcome, it going, Rob. guys? Hey, great to have you back on the show. Uh, we Actually, you were on previously when Lauren was on in the past. Yes, so yeah. I was uh, back in October. Uh, uh, three hours of secession talk, yeah. which was epic. So if you want to call on about secession still, I'm always down for oh, talking Oh, yeah, about we that. are always down for talking about secession. Well, Rob and I do a lot of secession activism. It would be good timing, too, because the secession panel from Keenvention, which you were the host of, Rob, yes. uh, is actually going to be released sometime tomorrow. So uh, folks who've been following along with the various different Keenvention video releases uh, we are now entering into Sunday so what I do is I release them chronologically so as they happen is the order in which I release them and I do them one per week after Keenvention is over so I start up first week after Keenvention yeah. just start putting one out per week because they're long I mean well, these panels are an hour and a half long. On top of that you can't throw all your content out at once you gotta, right. you gotta otherwise no one will watch everything at once. Exactly and, and because it's such a long video I figure one week's a good amount of time to give somebody who might be interested enough time to watch that one and then maybe watch another one the next week so it's almost like a keenvention serial like you would yeah. get on television yeah i'm gonna vouch for the panel it was a great panel i i was really glad to Best be a part of it thank you keenvention. yeah thank you for a you well no i don't know too, the ladies panel it. was pretty awesome i mean the sexist panel oh yeah the sexist panel because i'm a sexist <laughs> you know it was, you had to be hardcore though to go to the secession panel so i imagine a lot of people who were partying too hard on saturday night uh, uh are gonna have to watch the video because they weren't there in it's person it's too bad yeah, they missed yeah. a well, great no, by panel the, end of the panel though there, there was a full room but the it's true we had the, 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 at the end, it was filled, but that was around 10 a.m. Uh, yeah. But at 9 o'clock, like <laughs> 9 o'clock after the huge party that night beforehand, yeah, it was hard for me to get there. I was I'm glad like, you made it. I already had like two hours yeah. of sleep. I don't know how I didn't have a hangover, to be I, perfectly honest. I think the best part of the secession panel was watching all the secessionists like actually argue with one another about how it should be done and like all of the, you know, it's like people, all the it's nuances. Like, it was very funny. It's you like see people the, in the liberty movement arguing over how to be free. I know, right? It's amazing. It's just amazing how like we can't even get along when it comes to. Like, at least we're talking being about free. something important. Well, yeah, right. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a about talking about it. Yeah, it's a very important conversation to have, and I was glad that we were able to do it again this year at uh, Keenvention. I'd like to keep it as a yearly panel, it just to, be. just to kind of keep yeah, the be a ideas. Great panel. Yeah, to keep the ideas flowing because I mean, I guess you guys are hosting one at Liberty Forum. Yes, yeah, so we're going to we be are. doing a uh, secession panel at and, Liberty Forum and a polyamory and, panel. Yeah, what the what what kind of mix is that? You know, it's, uh, it's a beautiful you know, combination of complete, two completely different things. Complete freedom. No, no, no. It's not different at all. I think the freedom to love um, when people have more knowledge about um, about what their options are, because a lot of people don't know what polyamory is. Well, I feel like we allow them to live freer by giving them the knowledge. I mean, it's just an option. I mean, you well, don't have to actually be polyamorous to be free, well, but knowing about it gives you more personal autonomy. Well, absolutely. I mean, if if uh, my freedom can't be limited, why can my love be limited? You know, exactly. Live free, and love free. Live free, love free. So, Liberty Forum, for those who don't know, and we actually haven't talked a whole lot about it. It's coming up, and it'll be happening relatively soon. We're talking about maybe two months out at this point. Oh, just yeah? under that. So close. Uh, yeah, it'll, so it'll, close. It's, it's like right it's around good. the corner. In Shire Time, that's like next weekend. Well, I love this Shire Time <laughs> thing. I want to talk about that because you were talking about well, it on the Rebel Love Show. Don't which is say that. I'm preparing that, for so many things. That you do. Uh, so, Liberty Forum, um, go to nhlibertyforum.com. It's a beautiful website. They've done an amazing job with it. Yeah. And Liberty Forum is the yearly convention that is thrown every year by the Free State Project. The Free State Project really only does a few things. They uh, they sort of promote themselves with the idea of moving liberty-oriented people like the three of us uh, to New Hampshire from all around the world. So that's the primary goal of the Free State Project. And sort of to further those ends, they hold two different events every year in New Hampshire. One of them is the Liberty Forum. The other is the Porcupine Freedom Festival. And uh, uh, porkfest.com, that's going to come up in the summertime, so we'll talk more about that as it approaches. But Liberty Forum... Porkfest probably uh, attracts around 1,500 attendees. Liberty Forum maybe like 500 to 800 uh, over, a, over a weekend. And so it's more of like your hotel-style convention yeah. atmosphere. And it's a great event. I don't know what, what year it's in. It's got to be close to 10 years now. Not quite. Maybe like year nine or something like that. And they're moving it this year 
to Manchester, Bye. which I think is a great choice. Yes, oh, because it it's literally choice. walking distance from the Rebel Love Studios. I don't have to drive to Nashua like last year. Sure, and last year it was, you know, it's the, usually the dead of winter when this event happens, and this year it's, you know, no different. It's going to be early March, like the first weekend in March. There's a good chance snow's still going to be on the ground, you know, at that time. And actually, last year, it was kind of treacherous conditions to drive around in New Hampshire. And there were these parties that were going on in Manchester uh, during Liberty Forum, which are usually very, very well attended. And they certainly were well attended this year. But it was, like, harrowing to drive uh, from Nashua to Manchester, like, incredibly dangerous. And so it'll be nice to everybody just be downtown Manchester, where those parties will be very nearby and not hard to get to at all. And plus, it'll be easier for people who maybe they've never come to the Liberty Forum because to attend the Liberty Forum previously would require that you get transportation to Manchester, usually by airline, and then from Manchester go to Nashua. So you have to rent a car. So there's extra costs involved in that or take a taxi or something. So it'll actually probably be more affordable for the average person to attend Liberty Forum this year than previously. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, but the thing is, like, I understand what I had back down in Nashua, but Having it in Manchester, there is a huge uh, Liberty community there. Huge advantage. um, I mean, for me, and it's, you know, again, it's walking distance for me. I I love the fact that I don't have to drive. I can just go up there. But it's the biggest hotel in the state, from what I understand. Uh, The Radisson is where it's going to be taking place this year. The ticket prices are affordable. You can buy them. uh, You can buy kind of different variants. So there's like the one where you get all the meals and you can, you know, sit down at these banquet dinners. And then there's the other one where you just kind of fend for yourself and go out to places. Or you can pitch a talk. And get to go as a speaker. Oh, really? Um, yeah, because I'm doing the uh, issues with the non-aggression principle as a speaker at Liberty Forum. Okay. And okay. I get free admission for it. I'll be so. honest. Like, for me, I moved here before I ever went to a Liberty Forum or a Pork Fest. You should go to Liberty Forum. Mm. If you want to go to all the talks, you should get a ticket. It's great. However, just go there to hang out with a bunch of uh, liberty-minded people for a weekend, and you'll have a blast. Oh, yeah, yeah I-, I didn't even get a ticket last year, and I loved it. I'm like you, Rob. I didn't attend any of these events before I moved to New Hampshire, and I don't regret that, but I have to say that had I attended one of these events, it would have been a really amazing experience. Like, so many people who care about freedom all in the same place, but yet it's not a stuffy kind of convention-y. I mean, even though it is a hotel convention and there's going to be some people there who are wearing a suit, it's not a stuffy uh, suits kind of an occasion. No. It's a good time. I mean, I remember one year, and it hasn't happened since then, but it could again. I remember one year in the lobby of the Nashua Hotel, there was like a bong, there was like a drum session in there one year, and it, like the the smell of marijuana was wafting through the entire hotel. Yeah, it's not much more formal than Pork Fest, honestly. Uh, just little, barely. Just barely. Just barely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot of good. It's a lot of fun. Go to nhlibertyforum.com. You can get your tickets there now. And Free Talk Live will be broadcasting live uh, from the event, as has kind of been the. Exciting. Tradition the entire time. That was my first that's, that's time. Where you met us yeah, last year. that's where I met you guys. And Rebel yeah. Love Show is going to be recording two times at uh, Liberty Excellent. Forum. So come watch us there too. Where are you going to be recording? Are you using my my equipment? Yeah, I asked okay, you. Good. You said that's yes. Right. I actually went person. You said <laughs> oh, yes. I said you can. Whatever you need. Whatever you need. You told you me that. Me that, that I would have said, said that now had you not told me. I was going to suggest Ian, that you do it if you had. Can you done be that on all. top of this stuff, Ian? <laughs> Seriously. Basically, I'll just let anybody who wants to use the equipment. So the only thing that's important is to like make sure that the organizers of the event know what time you're going to be yeah, recording. Yeah, I haven't time yet. Okay, yeah, so yeah, we Ian needs that a life secretary. Oh, He's too busy. I did busy. talk to you beforehand. Yes, yes, you did. Yes. Uh, so our toll-free number here tonight, by the way, you can join the conversation. There's a lot to talk about. I teased the Bitcoin Jesus story all night last night, and we didn't get to it. So I definitely want to cover that. Plus, uh, Lauren, you've got Tamir Rice. He is the oh, yeah. 12-year-old who was shot to death by the police in, what was it, Cleveland? In Cleveland, Ohio. And, Where I'm, f- I'm from Ohio originally. Right. And there was video that had yeah. initially been released. It was very short. It showed the shooting from a, quite a distance, the security camera video. The full video has oh, now yeah. been released, and you're pretty shocked by this, Lauren. So we'll continue here in moments. Your calls are welcome as well. You can bring up anything you want at 855-450-FREE+. Plus, Rob was pulled over recently, and he got video the video's up right now over at freekeen.com. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. And, of course, you can bring up anything you want at 855-450-FREE or shoot us a call on Skype. Skype username is LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about, but it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand it's about demonstrating to the entire country that, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it but here in New Hampshire people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything you'd like. Toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online over at freetalklive.com. You get to create the content. What you see on the front page of the site was put there by listeners like you and then voted on by listeners like you as well. So go to freetalklive.com to get interactive. Something else you can do through our website is get a free pound of some of the best coffee out there from BuzzBox. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, and top 1% grade Arabica. This is great coffee. And it's competitively priced with other high-end coffees, but they're doing something unique 
that other coffee producers just aren't interested in, apparently, and that is to use the profits or some of the profits from uh, the coffee sales to help people in really tough parts of the world to make a better life for themselves. What you do to help out with this is go to coffee.freetalklive.com. That's coffee.freetalklive.com. You get signed up for their auto ship program there. Again, your first pound's free. You just pay the shipping cost. After that, they'll be sending to you however much coffee you want, as often as you want it sent to you. And And it is great. You like it. Testimonial. I just got it, and it is absolutely awesome. Amazing. I, Best I, coffee I've ever had. I can back up her claim because she didn't stop talking about it in the car. Oh my God, so, the whole way. <laughs> so get started at coffee.freetalklive.com. If for some reason you're not satisfied, no big deal. You can cancel your subscription anytime. But for every 10 Free Talk Live listeners that is uh, sign, signed up for this, that allows us to send out one new micro loan every single month over at coffee.freetalklive.com. So uh, let's jump into Roger Veer. Are either of you aware of Roger Veer? No. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, go ahead. You, uh, I know, I know you of him. You do know who he I is. I know of okay. him, yes. Okay, but you are not You are not aware of Roger Veer? Uh, no, actually. Okay. So Roger, you probably, unfortunately, at least in the foreseeable future, will not get a chance to meet Roger in person. He has actually attended the Porcupine Freedom Festival in the past. Oh. But unfortunately, he will be prohibited from doing so. Why? Uh, at least until further notice. The story is coming from the Telegraph in the UK. Early Bitcoin adopter, libertarian, and millionaire investor Roger Veer has been denied a U.S. visa to attend a conference, despite having been born in the United States. Veer made his fortune by buying Bitcoin in 2011 at a price of around $1, but renounced his U.S. citizenship last year. Now, our claim to fame, by the way, is uh, that Roger Veer was a listener to Free Talk Live, and he heard us talking about Bitcoin back in 2011. This was before we had anything. It was just like, oh, Bitcoin, this thing's in the news you know, we were brand new to it at that time. It was just a thing to talk about on the show. Interesting digital currency, whatever. He heard us talking about Bitcoin and like caught the vision of how evolutionary Bitcoin really oh is. Oh my God, you made this guy rich. He made himself risk by, rich by going and buying a bunch of them at a dollar a piece. Guys, and listen to, to Free He's Talk Live now, every right? night. He's at least amping Free Talk Live after that. He should be. He was it's actually he... an advertiser of the show okay. at the time. He runs a, a memory manufacturer in Japan called Memory Dealers. And he was advertising for Memory Dealers, which is like a kind of a business-to-business company. They don't do retail sales, or at least they didn't at that time. And so he was sort of advertising for wholesale memory purchasing, which, you know, how many people listening to Free Talk Live are in a position where they need to purchase wholesale memory? Yeah. So it's pretty clear Roger was like a big fan of what we were doing and was behind the show. So yeah, I would say he's probably one of the most important amplifiers we've I wonder oh, if he's listening had. right now. He that is, would be super cool. He may very well be, and if, he's, if he wants to call in, he certainly can he via should, Skype. Uh, he should do a commercial for you guys. Uh, listen to Free Talk Live, and you too could be a billionaire. <laughs> you could be. Well, Veer made uh, quite a bit of money, as you might imagine, uh, buying Bitcoin at a price of one dollar. Today, Bitcoins are around three hundred U.S. dollars. And uh, I remember one year when Roger came to uh, Porkfest. I think he's been to more than one, but one of those years, he came and was handing out people, giving Bitcoin to anyone who would take the time to install a Bitcoin wallet on their phone. He I would heard give you that. ten Bitcoin if you would do that. <laughs> I heard about that. Wow. And like back then, you know, it was maybe two dollars or three dollars a Bitcoin or something like that. So to him, having bought so many of them, it was like no big deal for him to hand out ten Bitcoin to somebody. Or no, you know what? I think they were like six bucks. Well, anyway, they weren't much. And so he was like handing all these Bitcoin out. Now, of course, anybody who held on to those Bitcoins has done fairly well for themselves. So, in fact, Roger was, I know I'm getting away from the point of the story. He's such an amazing character. This is a great story. There was a news story where he was uh, making headlines just the other day for being in New York City, even though, again, he's prohibited from being inside the United States. So what they had was like this device that has wheels on it and then a long rod up to an iPad. So basically the iPad is maybe at like five feet above the ground. And he can remotely control this device from his location. So he's, you know, sitting in some island country or in Japan or wherever it is he is. And he's got a remote control 
moving himself about the streets of Manhattan and encouraging people to install Bitcoin wallets on their smartphones and giving away oh. Bitcoin to, again, people who would install from, Bitcoin From his wallet. iPad robot. Oh, that's adorable. Robot. Yeah. <laughs> that's absolutely adorable. I really like this guy. So I'm really ever, sad. Right, I want him to come. Well, you know what? You're actually going to get to meet him because you're going to an Arcapulco <gasps> and he's going to be there. Oh, my goodness. So, I'm so excited. Yeah. But oh, people in the United yes. States, the only way you'll get to meet Roger Beer is by this robot thing. That he's got, I remember got his name streets. being on the list. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah, don't I think miss, I messaged him. Don't miss meeting Roger Beer. He's a good guy to know. Oh, I'm so excited. So uh, according to the story here at The Telegraph, uh, he renounced his U.S. Citizen, citizenship last year. And speaking to Coindesk, he said that he had sought legal advice prior to the move and had been assured that he would have no trouble getting visas. So the idea was repeal the citizenship, just renounce that completely, yeah. but then apply for the visa, just like anybody from any other country would do to come visit here. And apparently What's that's the reason why he's been denied a Good visa. Good question. We'll get to that. So in a tweet, Veer complained that the U.S. rejected his application within weeks of him paying a $325,000 tax bill to the country. Under U.S. law, even those who renounce citizenship can be liable for tax for up to a decade after wow. that. So what? He's been trying to kind of do it legit, right? Like he he wants to sever his ties from the United States as much as he possibly can. And he's been trying to go through the legitimate channels of, okay, well, you know, what forms do you have to file to renounce your citizenship? And then, you know, what are the tax consequences? And, okay, what what's the check I need to write here, guys, to make this all over and done with? And I guess they told him $325,000, but apparently that wasn't good enough. So he tried to pay him off with over a quarter million dollars. That's correct. And they still will not let him come into the geographical area known as the U.S. He's footing the bill for the government's heydays right. and vacations, and mm-hmm. he can't come for a conference. You got it. He also included in his tweet Protest time. a photograph of himself wearing a T-shirt with the slogan, Borders are imaginary lines, which wow. he reportedly wears oh. whenever crossing international borders. Wonderful. <laughs> That's awesome. Wonderful. I really like this guy. I'm going to have him on my show. His application has been rejected three times at a cost of $160 each time. I, I think that means the visa application. A letter from the U.S. government informed him, quote, You have not demonstrated that you have the ties that will compel you to return to your home country after your travel to the United States. So they're claiming that they believe this guy who has taken all this time and effort to cut his ties with the United States is going to want to stay here. Why would you go through the effort for that? That he's going to get this visa, you know, cut all the ties, get the visa for this conference, and then stick around. Stupid is as stupid does. There's more coming up here. We'll tell you more about the case. You're welcome to uh, share your thoughts here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. More on Roger Veer, a.k.a. Bitcoin Jesus. It's Free Talk Live. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-881-1075. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1 800 881 1075. That's 1 800 881 1075. Call 1 800 881 1075. The FAA has issued a reminder that any plane can crash and kill you. Deputy FAA Administrator Serena Grant. This year there will be more flights than ever. Any one of them could blow up in the middle of the sky without warning. That's why we're asking all Americans to tell their families that they love them before taking off. The agency also released a list of important questions to ask yourself or your seatmate during your flight, including should the wing be doing that? What is that whirring noise? And do all planes shake this much? They're reminding passengers that even the smallest amount of turbulence could mean you're headed toward a sudden explosive death. 
While hurtling through the sky at unimaginable speeds in a steel coffin can feel like gambling with your life, the FAA says there are ways to regain the illusion of control. If you're worried about crashing, why not switch your flight at the last second? It might just save your life or kill you depending on which plane crashes. And for those who aren't flying this holiday, the FAA has reminded everyone that a plane could fall out of the sky right on top of you at any moment. This is the Onion News Network. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you'd like. Here, toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We're talking about Roger Veer. He is a.k.a. Bitcoin Jesus, longtime listener of Free Talk Live. Uh, he actually discovered Bitcoin by listening to Free Talk Live. That's one of our big claims to fame. And we love Roger. He's been a huge supporter of Free Talk Live in the past and continues to be a big advocate for the ideas of liberty and, uh, and freedom all around the world. He's now prohibited from coming to the United States, at least until further notice. I suppose the government bureaucrats could waive that prohibition, but he's been trying to apply for a visa, which is, you know, what you would do if you're not a U.S. citizen and you wanted to come to the United States to spend some time. Even though he was born in the United States, the reason he's not a U.S. citizen is because he's renounced his citizenship, and I believe he went with uh, St. Kitts as his new citizenship. Now, you know, we know if you're a longtime listener of Free Talk Live, you probably have heard us talk previously about how the term citizen means one who owes a duty of allegiance in return for an obligation of protection. Which you do not get. Which you don't get from the government. They, uh, at least in the United States, have ruled in the Supreme Court multiple times that they have no obligation to protect you. They also have no obligation to do anything for you, uh, but they certainly have no obligation to protect you, and so therefore... Well, if they have no obligation to protect you, how could you have a duty to be of allegiance to them? So to me, the whole idea of a citizen is BS nonsense in the first place. But, you know, I don't blame Roger for trying to officially sever his ties. He's you know, no fan of the U.S. federal government, and this was something that was important to him. So he was successfully able to uh, surrender his citizenship or renounce that. But now, as a result, the U.S. goons are prohibiting him from entering the United States. This is after he's paid a $325,000 tax bill uh, to the U.S. federal government. He's tried to apply for a visa three times at $160 apiece, and has been denied every single time. Veer officially lives in Tokyo. This, according to the Telegraph in the UK, 
where he moved in 2005 after serving a 10-month prison sentence in the United States for, get this, selling firecrackers on eBay. <sighs> Such a dangerous person. He went to prison for that. So you can understand now why he doesn't feel too safe in the United States and why he wouldn't want, wouldn't necessarily want to spend too much time here. Clearly a terrorist. Only a terrorist would sell fireworks to make people happy. <laughs> He does have a second home in St. Kitts, a small island in the West Indies, which is where he applied for the visa from. Bloomberg reported in June that Veer had started a service offering a passport from the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, which allows international travel to many countries without the need for visas and a low level of taxation in return for a Bitcoin payment. Uh, the small we actually talked about that on the air here on Free Talk Live. The government or the small government had offered a similar service in 1984, but residents of some countries found it difficult to get the necessary $400,000 in real estate investment out of their own countries. Veer hoped that the unregulated nature of Bitcoin would make that process easier. Speaking to CoinDesk, Veer said, "Quote: I would be fine with them denying my visa if it was for a valid reason, but they're either lying, ignorant, or stupid when they claim that I plan to secretly overstay." my visa and live as an illegal immigrant in the United States. Veer bought his first Bitcoins back in 2011, as we discussed previously, at a price of around $1. And he's been very active in the Bitcoin startup community since then, investing in a lot of the very familiar Bitcoin universe names that many of us know today. And I believe he is actually with us here. Roger, are you there? I am here. Hi, Ian. Excellent. Hi, Roger. Roger. You're on with Lauren Rumpler, myself, and and, uh, Rob Mathias from Manchester. Hi, everyone, in that case. So I I wasn't listening live, so you'll have to bring me up to... Oh, we've just been reading the uh, Telegraph story about you being denied uh, visas here in the United States for the purposes of coming to, to attend a conference and the ridiculous rationale, them claiming that you essentially are planning to... Uh, to stay here after you've gone through the ridiculous process of renouncing your citizenship. Yeah, and one other thing that I don't think I did a good enough job uh, expressing to the media and on my Twitter account there is that the entire thing was just, it was almost like insanity. They were basically claiming that I hadn't proved that I have significant ties outside of the U.S., but I had brought in an entire stack of paperwork proving that uh, you know I started a business in Japan in 2006, and <laughs> I brought a whole bunch of documentation proving all of this to them, and they literally refused to even look at the paperwork. They wouldn't even let me slide wow. it through the slot wow. in the window for them to look at. And where and was this? You went to an embassy or something? Food. This was at the U.S. Embassy in Barbados, which is a small island in the Caribbean. Do you think that they're uh, taking orders from someone higher up, or they just, you know, they're always treating people who are expats like that. Um, to be honest, I think it's just more of the same. There's there's no accountability when it comes to government, and they have no incentive to, to treat people right. And uh, you see it everywhere, whether it's the DMV or the U.S. Embassy. They don't care. Interesting. Have uh, people been reaching out to you for interviews to you know cover this story? I've been just absolutely overwhelmed with uh, media wow. attention from all over the world, and I've still been catching up with all the emails from well, it. Uh, oh, fantastic. Non-stop. I have well, to say, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time out, because I know you're busy, and uh, yeah. you know, I literally just said uh, said to you the, uh, just during one of the breaks, like, hey, you know, do you have time to talk? And yeah, I sent you a message as well. So uh, thank you, Ro- uh, Roger. Where are you tonight right now? Are you in the Barbados, or are you elsewhere? No, I, I'm in St. Kitts, which is the country that I have a citizenship in, and it's a wonderful little Caribbean island. And for anybody who can afford it and is fed up with the U.S., I, I really do recommend it here. It's a beautiful uh, nation with friendly people and uh, really, really good uh, laws in, in general compared to the U.S. So do you mind telling why you decided to renounce citizenship from the United States? What was your motivation there? Um, I haven't lived in the U.S. for about nine years now, and the, the biggest motivating factor is I, I look at the United States government, and they're dropping bombs on people all over the world. And I don't want anything to do with that. And then they don't even show any remorse. There's a, a video that I linked to in uh, every chance I got with the different reporters where it's Madeleine Albright on YouTube. And the, the, the lady from 60 Minutes, Barbara Walters, asks, you know, we've had reports that more than half a million Iraqi children have been starved to death by the U.S. What, what do you think about that? And she goes, oh, I think it was worth it. Yeah, it's sick. And Ugh. it is sick. And if you think That's about disgusting. as adults in the U.S., we have no say over the political system at all. We have almost no say whatsoever. So how could anybody in their right mind possibly think that children in Iraq have any say whatsoever over what the government policies are there? But then this lady and a bunch of other people in the U.S. government thinks that it's okay 
to starve to death half a million kids to punish them for what other people have done. It's just absolutely insanity, and I, I want absolutely nothing to do with people that think that that sort of thing is okay. Now, if you, you know, living somewhere else around the world, the government here obviously thinks they still control you. So, like, there are banking regulations where foreign banks will have to essentially snitch on you to the IRS. So it, like, wasn't an option for you to just try to disconnect from the government to, you know, avoid going through official channels? What, why seek the, you know, was it because you knew they'd come after you eventually or they'd come after your bank account? Yeah, they still may come after me eventually someday. But hmm. uh, how much money but, are they claiming that you owe them? Well, um, I haven't exactly calculated it all exactly. There's a, a thing that's called an exit tax where they tax you on your uh, net worth at the time of your renunciation, mm -hmm. and that'll be coming due uh, on April fifteenth of next or this year actually. So coming up soon. Oh my um, God! So you've already, I, hold on. You've already paid them three hundred twenty-five thousand dollars more, and now you're going to have to pay the that's that wasn't the exit tax. No, no, unfortunately not. So, um, and I've been so busy with all the different Bitcoin startups and making investments all over the place that unfortunately my my tax form for uh, 2013 was more than a thousand pages long and cost a fortune just to the CPAs and accountants to help prepare it oh, in the hopes that gosh. the IRS won't audit me and send me to jail someday for one minor mistake in there. Uh, the check that was in my uh, tweet there the other day that I just sent to the IRS like a week before they denied my visa. Uh, the check for three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars was a partial payment for what uh, for the twenty thirteen tax year. Uh, I don't but blame I still you for owe them some more, unfortunately. And to me, it just seems insane. I just paid them three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars, which, as anybody knows, is a huge amount of money. And I worked really, really hard to earn that money, and I sent that over to them. And then they won't even let me attend a conference. Wow. Uh, for like three days in Miami. They won't even let me change airplanes in the U.S. when I want to go back to Japan. That's I have crazy. to fly from the Caribbean through Europe to get back to Japan, which is twice as you know, twice as far to go that way. Unbelievable. Around Roger, can you stick with us? I know you're busy, but uh, if you've got time, I've got more questions for you. Sure, we can do another segment. All right, cool. One more segment with Roger Veer, a.k.a. Bitcoin Jesus. He is calling from his home, his new home in St. Kitts. He can't come back to the United States, at least at this time. We'll continue with his saga in moments. 855-450-FREE is our toll-free number. It's Free Talk Live. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. It's the end of year clearance sale at Lumber Liquidators. We'd rather sell it than count it. So every floor and every store is on sale and it all must go. Get incredible deals on first quality flooring from just 35 cents a square foot. Beautiful three quarter inch pre-finished solid hardwood is just $179. Save even more on all liquidation clearance and closeouts. If it's in stock, it's on sale and pay no interest until January 2017. Don't miss these end of year deals on over 400 floors. Visit LumberLiquidators.com to find a store near you. If the the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account. You need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face -face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you in the IRS. 1 800 425 4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1 800 425 4610. Wall and Associates, 1 800 425 4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary, not a solicitation for legal services. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the 
problem, officer! Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. <laughs> This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You dial in toll free and take control of the airwaves here at 855 450 free. Though right now we've got special guest Roger Veer on the line. He is with us via Skype. You can join us via Skype as well. Skype username is lrn.fm. And if you like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, please become a Free Talk Live amplifier for just $5 per month. All you have to do is go to amp.freetalklive.com. It's a great way to get behind Free Talk Live and help us get the message of freedom and Bitcoin and other you know liberty-oriented things on the air on, right now, over 150 stations, but we could have 200, 500 stations, you know, somewhere in there. Uh, and likely we will with your help. If you become an amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com, it helps us get this, uh, the show out to more radio stations, expand the satellite footprint of the of Free Talk Live and LRN.FM. And you get perks, too, like access to the AMP-only call-in lines, the AMP-only Facebook group, which is a lot of fun, and more. You go and get the details, get signed up. You can use any major credit card via PayPal. And you can also use uh, Visa and MasterCard right there on the website. And Roger, you're going to be happy to know that uh, the technical wizards behind the scenes at freetalklive.com are working on a redesign of the, the whole site. And that's going to include, they're going to have to basically recode the entire AMP system. So I said, all right, well, now that Coinbase is offering monthly bitcoin contributions as an option we got to work that in so sometime in early 2015 hopefully we will see uh, the free talk live amp program accepting bitcoin really glad to hear it and and you know i think every most of the listeners of your show know just how important it is and if you if you don't support governments and the way they try to control people all around the world the most powerful tool we have available to us is to use bitcoin in every transaction every chance we have so Rob uh, was asking during the break here, you know, questions about why go legit. What's your yeah. question exactly, Rob? I mean, if uh, you obviously oppose the state, I mean, uh, in general, from what I can tell, uh, why go through their, you know, rules to steal from you? Why are you even bothering? Why are you even going through with all of it? Um, they'll lock me in a cage if I don't is, is the short answer. Um, and I, I've, I've been to jail once. I would prefer not to go again <laughs> is the second answer. You've been to prison, federal prison. That's uh, it's different from jail, right? Yeah, I, I spent uh, nine months in federal prison and one month in a halfway house. Uh, around the year 2000, I sold uh, store-bought firecrackers on eBay, uh, along with dozens of other resellers, including uh, like Cabela's Sporting Goods and a bunch of others. And uh, I ran for California State Assembly as a libertarian at the same time. And uh, the federal government really didn't like the things that I was saying during that campaign. And wow. I wound up being the wow. only person in the entire world to be prosecuted for selling those without a permit, even though the company that I bought them from had no permit. The manufacturer had no permit. Nobody else had a permit. But uh, 
they got me. And I, I'd prefer not to go through that experience again. So let's talk a little bit more about the money. You just cut a check for $325,000 after going through this ridiculous process of renouncing citizenship. For a long time, you, you couldn't talk about it publicly, um, but I'm glad you finally can now. So you went through this insane process, and you know that's sort of done. You cut this check, which is only a partial payment on your 2013 taxes, so presumably there are more checks to be cut before this is all said and done with. The article in the Telegraph, and sometimes the media gets it wrong, so I'm wondering, you know, from you, Roger, the article in the Telegraph says that even after you renounce citizenship, the government here could still find you supposedly liable for taxation for up to another decade. What's that all about? Yeah, uh, they own you regardless of where you live anywhere in the world, and they'll take your money, and they don't care what you say or what you do. Um, so the way it looks like it'll work out in my case is I'll owe uh, taxes for all of 2013, of course. I renounced in February of 2014, so I will owe taxes up until February of 2014 as a U.S. citizen. Mm -hmm. And then after 2014, I'll owe taxes as a non-U.S. citizen taxpayer. For a decade? Like Is it for an entire decade? Um, it doesn't look like I'll be subject to it for an entire decade because I'd already been living outside of the U.S. for uh, nine years, but they have all sorts of – it's basically indecipherable. It's basically whenever they feel yeah, like saying, however okay – However much money they want to steal from right, you, they're oh, going to do it. Right. Okay, Roger, we'll let you go now. You know, whenever that point is, whatever <laughs> arbitrary – you know, whenever you filled up the coffers enough. Lauren's got a question. Yeah, I was wondering um, – do you have any advice that you would give to people that want to go the same route as you with renouncing their citizenship? Like maybe things that you've learned from the experience that you would do differently if you could do it over again to kind of avoid some of these problems? I'm, everybody's case is a little bit different. I'm, the biggest thing to realize is that if you renounce your U.S. citizenship, you're not going to be able to live in the United States uh, ever again, uh, which is a really, really big step that a lot of people are not really willing to take in life. Um, although maybe the Free State Project will have more and more success and eventually be able to, you know, secede from the federal government We're there. We're doing our best and to do that. And if you guys do manage to actually secede, I, I will gladly move to New Hampshire. Uh -huh. that, uh, oh, fantastic. Well, Rob and I well, are uh, actively working move. on that. Well, the secession panel is going to be coming out tomorrow at keenvention.info and uh, also the free Keen YouTube channel. So the uh, we're keeping the conversation alive here about secession, that's for sure. We've yet to see, I, I, I hope that at some point we will see one of these Liberty reps, because there's several uh, this year, as you may know, Roger, at least 15, some say 20, uh, actual Free State Project participants were elected to the State House. And I hope that at some point one of them has the cojones to put forth an actual bill to Me talk too. about secession. We'll see. I'm hoping it does. So, uh, so let's see. So, Roger, you're going down to Anarchapulco, aren't you? Yeah, I'll gladly be in Anarchapulco. Um, I apply. I had to apply for a visa to go to Mexico with my current citizenship. But uh, how was Mexico's that process compared to the United States? Uh, what what an uh, easy. I, I I don't believe in visas and passports in general, but if there are going to be such things. Uh, the Mexican embassy did it really well. I applied at the Mexican embassy in, in Tokyo. Uh, the guy there was real nice. Uh, I told him about my criminal past. He said, no problem at all. Here's your visa. <laughs> I love that. Um, um, and the, the other really interesting difference, though, too, is when I you know, spent a, a bunch of days at the U.S. embassy here just recently, they have all sorts of cameras, and there's big you know, guards with sticks to hit people with if they need to. And there's the, the doors, if anything, were even more secure than the federal prison that I was in. Wow. Whereas when you go to any of these other embassies, uh, it's just like going to a normal office. And I think the main reason for that is these other countries aren't dropping bombs on people yep. all over the world and have so many people angry at them for those sorts of things. Uh, whereas the U.S. government, I mean, it's like a real fortress when you go to their embassies. Wow. Yeah, I'd say you're right on on Very that. Have you decided what you want to, what your topic will be for Anarchapulco? I'm, I'm thinking about doing business ethics. Um, I, I'll have to talk with Jeff and see what he wants me to do or what I want to do. I, I, I'm sure it'll be something Bitcoin related, to be that, honest. That is coming up, by the way, February 24th through March 1st. You can go to anarchapulco.com. Lauren, you're going to be speaking there. Yes. Um, Ernie Hancock from LRN.FM, he's going to be there. And, of course, Roger Veer, among others, uh, Angel Clark, Jeff Berwick, etc. You can go to anarchapulco.com to check out the event. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Our very own Mark Edge is going to be going down there as well. So. Oh, really? Yeah, he's going. 
I don't have a passport. Oh, that's exciting. Oh, I've got a world passport, which I have yet to actually try. And I just don't, I don't want to justify spending, you know, the, the time and effort to go all the way down to the U.S. border and then, you know, not make it through. Yeah. <laughs> so when I try out my world passport, I'll probably try it at the Vermont, uh, New Hampshire border instead, since it's a little more convenient. But uh, so, Roger, what other things you got going on besides dealing with the state and uh, making appearances? What other things are you busying yourself with these days? Um, one thing that I'm really excited uh, for in regards to Bitcoin and non-liberty activist types or non-volunteerist types is a, a website called Purse.io. Are you yeah. guys already familiar with this one? I am not. What is Purse.io? It's really, really. Uh, I think it. I think it's one of the key things to get people that are just normal housewives or normal, you know, Democrats and Republicans excited about Bitcoin. Purse.io is a website that allows anybody to be able to get a between, you know. 10, 15, 20, even 25% discount on anything you want from Amazon.com when you pay in Bitcoin. And the way that this is possible is Amazon has another service called Mechanical Turk, which basically allows people all over the world in you know, other countries to work online doing you know, easy tasks and maybe they can earn two or three or four or five dollars an hour. But Amazon only offers to pay out via US dollar checks in the mail or Amazon store credit. But if you're someone in Indonesia and you've earned, you know, $100 worth of Amazon store credit, but there's no domestic Amazon, it's not worth it to have anything shipped from you there. So they're willing to buy whatever it is that you want from Amazon. Amazon will ship it directly to you. You wind up with a 20 or 25% discount, and then they get the Bitcoin. So you're happy. They're happy. Amazon's happy. Everybody's happy all the way around. And I've been ordering all sorts of stuff uh, via this website. That's Purse, P-R-S-E. Io, yeah, like, I'm going to uh, take a link output. to this, uh, Roger. I'll share it on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. I have also used Purse.io to purchase some things from Amazon, and it works. Uh, it's you know depending what you do is you select the uh, the discount that you want. So if you select a lower discount, it's more likely that that's going to go faster because somebody's you know that's essentially the discount you're selecting is basically the premium on top of Bitcoin's price that the people are paying to essentially you know buy Bitcoin uh, from you through this whole process. Essentially, you're getting product from Amazon, they're getting Bitcoin, uh, and there's not just people with Mechanical Turk. The average person can also go to Purse.io and they can purchase Bitcoin with a credit card, which is relatively hard to do in most places but purse.io has made it work roger thanks for coming on free talk live tonight thank you guys so much for everything you do there in new hampshire as well. i'm sure we will talk again in the future keep up the great work out there and mark will be seeing you at anarchapulco thanks roger good night thanks everyone good night, good night. Yep, there's more coming up here on free talk live we got plenty more time for you at 855 450 free you take control of the airwaves more coming up DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Nothing compares to a good cup of coffee. But if you're getting your coffee from the store, you're likely not getting a good cup of coffee. Free Talk Live's teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you a free pound of the best of the best coffee, shade-grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is that for every 10 people that get coffee through our link, coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. When the loan's paid, we lend the money again. Help others, one cup at a time, coffee.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, January 7th, 2015. Gold is trading at $1,218, silver at $16.25, and Bitcoin is trading around $285.68. Today's precious metal price is brought to you by Midas Resources Incorporated, helping clients convert their paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver. Get their 10 Reasons book free by calling 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. How much food is in your pantry right now? Could you feed your family for two weeks, one week? How about three days without any help? Keeping an emergency food storage kit is the most effective way to begin to ensure your family's well-being during an emergency. eFoods Direct is food security for whatever the future might hold. Go to eFoodsDirect.com slash Liberty Beat or call 800-620-5520 to learn more about food security in a time of crisis. In the news, the FBI has stated they do not believe warrants provided by a court are required when using cell phone surveillance tools, sometimes known as stingrays. During private briefings with staff members of Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Patrick Leahy and Senator Chuck Grassley, the Bureau admitted they do not pursue warrants before deployment of the controversial technology. The lawmakers responded to the briefings by writing Attorney General Eric Holder and Homeland Security Chief Johnson, demanding answers on how the devices are being used. The five-member Federal Communications Commission is expected to vote on net neutrality rules next month. The FCC spokeswoman said Chairman Tom Wheeler's proposal will be considered by the commission. The details of the proposal have not been made public. Open Internet activists believe the end of net neutrality could be the beginning of a multi-tier pay-to-play Internet system. Some critics argue that net neutrality and government regulation of the World Wide Web will actually hurt the free flow of information. Net neutrality is supposed to guarantee equal access to the Internet. The Liberty Bee is sponsored in part by My Magic Mud, detoxifying tooth powder, the most effective and affordable dental care around. Get a 150 application jar at MyMagicMud.com. Want to reach tens of thousands of like-minded listeners every day with your messenger product? The Liberty Beat is looking for sponsors for their daily news service. Support this grassroots media project while expanding your reach to a targeted market. To find out more, go to thelibertybeat.com slash advertise. This is The Liberty Beat for Wednesday, January 7th, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Today, family members of 9-11 victims and several lawmakers are scheduled to hold a press conference calling for the release of a classified 28-page report on the 9-11 attacks. Representatives Walter B. Jones, Stephen Lynch, and former Senator Bob Graham will be joined by the 9-11 Families United for Justice Against Terrorism in an effort to raise awareness for House Resolution 428, which would force the release of the documents. Bob Graham told CNN the documents primarily deal with who financed 9-11, and they point a strong finger at Saudi Arabia. Family members say President Obama personally promised to release the pages, but has failed to do so. The Federal Aviation Administration has begun issuing permits for the use of drones for crop monitoring and photographing real estate properties. The FAA made exemptions to the current ban on commercial drone use for crop scouting in Washington and a real estate agent in Tucson, Arizona. The permit requires that users have a ground pilot and observer. The pilots have at least one FAA private pilot certificate and the drone must stay within the line of sight of the operator. The Liberty Bee is made possible today by Central Texas Gunworks, your online source for firearms, firearm accessories, and ammunition. They take major credit cards and now accept Bitcoin. Visit them online at shop.centraltexasgunworks.com. Support for today's broadcast of the Liberty Beat also comes from the Conscious Resistance Network, featuring videos, news reports, and articles from a spiritual anarchist perspective. Experience the Conscious Resistance at theconsciousresistance.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, January 7th, 2015. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagen reporting. 
reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. It's the Onion Radio News. A new crispy snack cracker will ease the crushing pain of modern life. The dull, all-consuming ache of present-day existence will be slightly alleviated when Nabisco's breakthrough T.C. McCrispy's line of crackers arrives today. Available in regular Garden Ranch and Zesty Cheddar, the new crackers will flood consumers' bodies with fat, salt, and starch to produce a pleasing sensation of warmth and nourishment, momentarily freeing them from a relentless, crushing sense of profound grief. Mel Krychek is Nabisco's Director of Corporate Communications. Our tasty new snack cracker will, if only for a few lovely moments, significantly lessen the hideously bleak and empty torment of modern life that festers in every solitary soul. Nabisco expects most despair-riddled consumers to eat an entire box in one sitting. Doyle Redlin for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you'd like. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features you'll find waiting for you there on the site. Uh, Once again, that is freetalklive.com. Joining you in studio tonight, it's Ian. Rob. And Lauren Rumpler. Rob is here. He's Rob Mathias from The Rebel Love Show. You can go and check him out at rebelloveshow.com. Yes, it is, RebelLoveShow.com. You do a weekly program based in Manchester. Yes, it's about the, basically it's more of like a hangout show. It's a, it's really about the community here in uh, the Free State Project, but there's a lot. Yeah, you always have at least one guest on. It yeah. was Bo Davis was the most recent episode. Yes. And longtime but. listeners of the show know Bo as the uh, the editor extraordinaire of both Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree and the new 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, two awesome documentaries. Yeah, second time he was on, but like, for me, it's kind of uh, very inspiring to have him on because both me and my co-host, Shire Dude, we both moved here. Uh, we signed the intent to move for the Free State Project after watching Victimless Crime that he produced. So it's kind of like... Independently, the two of you Both independently, yeah. That, no, we didn't right. know each other until... I met him at Liberty Forum, mm-hmm. but I had never met him and, and knew who he was until I saw him at, at Liberty Forum. So one of the things you were saying on your recent episode, uh, which is, you know, you can, of course, download it at rebelleftshow.com. Yes. You can watch it on YouTube. You can catch it on lrn.fm every now and then. Uh, one of the things you guys were talking about was that there was two phases, or I think you were saying this, that there were two phases, like the phase where you realize you've got to get to New Hampshire and then the phase where you actually commit to getting there. How would you define yeah. that? I mean, there's, uh, for me, uh, a lot of us uh, that I've seen to talk to lately, um, there, there's usually a red pill moment when you sign. Okay. And then there's another, there's something else that happens like, oh, come on, I really have to get there now. Like, I, I, I'm committed. Now I really have to move. For me... I signed the intent to, to move after watching Victimless Crime Spree, but I didn't really like get my uh, get myself into gear until after the whole Conquer Bearcat thing happened, hmm. which happened after I had signed the intent to move. And I see like you know 500 to 1,000 people at the Conquer City Hall, you know, demanding that the local you know quote unquote authorities don't have military weapons against their civil against the civilian population as a Bearcat. And I see all these, you know, liberty activists doing something there. I'm like, I got to be around these people. Like, I right. can't, I'm by myself in Chicago, and there's like all <laughs> these in, people doing something for just a bear cat. You're in like the third largest city or the second largest city in the United States. Third largest, I think, something Chicago. Like that. Um, or fourth. Maybe it's San Francisco that's number three. Anyways, top five. And you're in this major metropolitan area, and you don't know anybody who cares about freedom? Oh, I did. I mean, I'll go to Ron Paul meetups and there'd be like, you know, a half a dozen people. I go to a Bitcoin meetup in Manchester and there's 40 people in a city of 100,000. Right. And uh, yeah, that's that's very similar to my experience where in Sarasota, Florida, we could actually pull a half a dozen people in Sarasota, Florida. And that's only like, you know, 500,000 people. Um, But, you know, these guys that are stuck in these big cities, I just feel so bad for them because... What can you really do there? I mean, even if you could have a hundred people in a big city like that show up to some kind of meeting, it's a what the drop. Hell are you it's a drop do? in the bucket. It's not going to do anything. Like yeah. you have to have numbers, and like here, there's a smaller population. Numbers do matter. So you were actually uh, in the streets of Manchester the other day, and you were accosted by a man with a costume and a gun. 
he claimed to be with a gang called the Manchester Police. Yes, the the local uh, gang known as the Manchester PD. Uh, they had to, uh, well, they didn't have to, but apparently, well, here in New Hampshire, you have to get your car inspected. This is one of the bad parts. Yes, one uh, of the bad parts in New Hampshire. And I understand New Hampshire's why. Not perfect. I understand why many people get an LLC and get their car. You know, a registered out of state. Heck, I would. I prefer it to monopoly on. Uh, you know, insurance. Here. Well, okay, so yeah, you don't have to yeah. have car yeah. insurance you don't here. Have although to have car that's insurance. a good idea, and and they do mandate that you have these inspections. Now, look, that's a good idea it's a too, lot right? Cheaper. Like, it's a good idea to have an inspection. So even though the car that I drive is, I don't own it. It's a corporate car, like you were talking yeah. about. Um, I still get it yeah, inspected. Yeah, but it's naturally you know? incentivized. I mean, you don't need you right. don't need to require these sorts of things. I mean, people are going to come to that conclusion on their own, or they're only they're only messing up their own lives when they don't take care of their property. I mean, but but I, I'm it's I'm glad up here it's at, it's a lot cheaper. I come from a state that ma- it was mandatory for insurance. I I prefer this. It's actually a lot cheaper. I mean, I wish that we didn't have any mandates, but um, this is actually a lot better anyway yeah, i mean for me like the well the whole inspection thing they put a sticker on your windshield which are color coded mm-hmm. i have the wrong color so in the last three weeks i've been pulled over three times by man manchester pd i'm always scared to drive during the day because right I, what they'll do is they'll just sit on the side of the road and they'll eyeball everybody coming yeah. by and they'll look for the color and the number that's on there and then they'll just put their blues on and pull you over well on that too before before that even happened i've been pulled over at least 10 times before this the last three weeks has even happened but that's because my car is like a cop magnet because the liberty stickers <laughs> I mean, my first couple of days here, oh my I was God, don't I know it says it. Bitcoin. My, my first couple of days here, uh, I was questioning where I bought my car at, which was here. But like, I'm, I'm in Manchester, and I asked, they're questioning me about Keen, like day three that really? I'm in. Yeah, it's on, it's on my channel. I actually videotaped <laughs> that too. But uh, I didn't, I never, I didn't come here to be a uh, uh, right to travel activist. Mm-hmm. But somehow I am now. I, I have no idea how this even happened. But anyways, well, uh, I mean, it's not like you're not going to inspect the car as you tell well, no, the officer. I even tell him I don't want to get inspected. Like I live and die by my calendar. I'm showing him my calendar. I'm like it's in my calendar. It doesn't make it up. It's like it's right here. Like I'm going to go get it checked out. But the thing is with him, I, when you know you're going to get a ticket or a letter of extortion from like a, a gang member, um, you know, there's not. He has to hold it there. He, I have to take it from him. He can't just drop it. Or no, he could drop. He it. He could have, but he didn't. He, he could have. So I've had a cop throw a ticket in the car and storm. I off. spent like eight minutes talking to this cop, trying to like reach him as another human being, like trying to, sh- the, to convince him, like you're doing something bad. You're stealing from me. Like you were actually you sleep really nice to him. You didn't break him or nice. anything. I was really calm. polite. I, mean, I was aggravated, but I wasn't like screaming at the no, guy. No, no, you no. Know? You were really calm. I was really impressed with how you handled it. I you thought had, that was really good activism. Though you also I, had a camera person with you, which was helpful yes new, a new mover and leverage she uh helped me uh, film that she was in a car with me so she filmed the uh, it's super helpful to have somebody there to record a traffic stop that way it's one less thing that you have to think about when you're interacting with these cops now you went the route of actually having a conversation with him there are other techniques well, yeah, right? there's a lot of different techniques not saying anything right you know uh just being just a couple words and if whatnot. you're gonna speak you better be careful because you know you never know when you're gonna talk yourself into another ticket or an arrest or something like that, and that's what they're looking for. They're looking for you to mess up and say something that uh, that they can get you on. And sometimes it can be as simple as you know you moved somewhere and you didn't change your address oh, on the license. Uh, trust me, believe me, you shouldn't talk to the cops unless you absolutely have to. Now, mind you, I'm literally getting it. You know, he's already threatening me with violence as it is. So, like, I'm already got the ticket. So now right. I'm like, you know. If he hadn't done it to that point, I would have just not said a word. I just would have handed my yeah, ID, and that's it. They're actually making it easier and easier for you to not have to say a word to the cop. There's this new thing called free, uh, uh, fair DUI, um, and I have a video of it on my page, Lauren Rumpler, um, Facebook.com slash Lauren Rumpler Productions. But um, it's called the fair DUI, and you can fill out a paperwork, and you can put it in a... Um, in a, a slip, bag? in a Ziploc bag, mm-hmm. along with your ID and your proof of insurance, and drive right. by the checkpoint with your window up, and you, you don't have to talk to them at all. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard about this. Actually, we haven't talked about it on the air yet. But I, I saw have the, the video on my page. I, so I saw the the uh, the story about that where a guy gets through a checkpoint by doing this, which is a great move because you know they are constantly trying to invade your privacy at these checkpoints, well, etc. I mean, et there's a lot of different techniques on how to get through from being you know being detained by a police officer when you're being pulled over through a checkpoint or whatnot. Sometimes it feels like every cop is different. Like you know, sometimes you can get, definitely yeah, everyone they're human beings just like everyone else. 
Well, um, one time we were in Manchester, a cop pulls the pops the door open with uh, Derek J. We had been pulled over not far away from one of the uh, places to gather in Manchester, and uh, this cop Harrington number one comes up to the car and starts talking to us, and then at some point he just pops the door open. So another good tip is to make sure your doors are locked whenever a cop oh, yeah. comes up. Uh, I mean, to you. or you could end up like the person in. Um I'm trying to remember what state it was, but the the cop reached inside the car to try and unlock the door, and the person Ugh. sped off because they were nervous, and now they're in jail. I think it was California. Oh man! Yeah, have oh. you seen that video? No, I haven't. Ooh, There's yeah. There's so many videos. I mean, how do you how can you even watch all the you bad know, cop videos? You know, the thing videos? is, is that people people are realizing that they're 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 checking how they feel when cops pull around. So if I mean, literally, think about it. The next time a cop turns his lights on or you pass a cop think to yourself how do i feel right now and that gut instinct really yeah. tells you a lot about how, what police really stand for should be Absolutely. an indicator for sure so we'll talk more about the pullover here in a moment uh i thought it went pretty well it was an interesting conversation and you can see the video at freekeen.com i'll put a link up on our facebook google plus and twitter this is free talk live 855 450 free is our number Here's a special message for those of you who owe the IRS at least 10000 or more in back taxes. The IRS has special programs in place that could eliminate or reduce your tax debt by thousands of dollars. Call the tax helpline that has been set up to help you. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. Stop the wage garnishments, levies, and tax liens now. Once you've qualified and enrolled, the IRS will stop all the collection activities against you. These unique programs have been allocated to help the economy and significantly reduce or eliminate your tax burden. The IRS is currently accepting reduced settlements and other favorable programs. You may qualify for substantial savings, so get the help you need. For free information and to see if you qualify, take down the number now for the Tax Representation Hotline. 800-691-6129. That's 800-691-6129. 800 691 6129. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877 357 9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. A congressman recently revealed that legislation totaling 2,900 pages and involving more than $1 trillion was available to members of Congress for less than 48 hours to study and consider. That's over 60 pages of legislation per hour. Do you think anyone read the entire bill? I'm Jim Babka with DownsizedDC.org. Consider a proposal buried in a 3,200-page, $388 billion bill, which would have empowered committee chairmen or their agents to examine Americans' tax returns. When this horrible provision came to light, no one claimed to know how it got into the bill. One congressman questioned said, I didn't write it, I didn't approve it, I wasn't even consulted. If your attorney represented you this way, he might be disbarred. But this is how Congress represents you every day. That's why DownsizedDC.org has created the Read the Bills Act. You can force Congress to read their bills before they pass them at DownsizedDC.org. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. 
I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, dial toll-free. Take control of the airwaves here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm, so feel free to do that at your leisure. And you can, of course, join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Get interactive in a variety of ways there. Now, if you care about online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network. They encrypt your internet connection, so therefore your ISP, which right now probably is logging all the websites you visit and all the search terms that you enter, maybe keeping those logs for as long as five years they won't be able to do that anymore as soon as you start using ProXPN's free software. You can just go and download it for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Linux users, it's possible to get ProXPN working. It's just a bit of a different setup process for you. It's all very simple. Go to ProXPN.com FTL. Now, with a free account, you've got limited bandwidth. So you're going to want to upgrade at some point to their premium account to give you unlimited bandwidth servers around the world to which you can connect. You can privately torrent with their premium account as well as get past regionally blocked websites. It's a great service and it's available to you at an amazing price. In fact, you can get 50% off the price of their annual account by using code FTL50. So when you're ready to upgrade to premium, use code FTL50 and you'll save 50%. That breaks the price down to around 5 bucks a month and... Once you get through your first year, the renewal price for the next year is going to be the same. So you actually are locking in that 50% discount for the lifetime of your account. So go and get started at proxpn.com slash FTL. And there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose but your privacy. And don't forget to use code FTL50 at proxpn.com slash FTL. Rob Mathias and Lauren Rumpler are here in the studio, made the uh, the journey out from Manchester Thanks for coming all the way out here tonight to uh, spend time on Free Talk Live. Of course. <laughs> always pleasure. love coming on. You guys are doing great work, great media work out there in Manchester. And uh, yeah. Rob, you just recently put some fresh media online via YouTube. Yes. There's a video up right now over at freekeen.com. So, uh, the article is titled Free Stater versus Manchester PD over Inspection Sticker Edict. And so you actually weren't pulled over. This dude just pulled yeah, up to I, you, right? No, I. Uh, the, we, for, we, well, technically, we were pulled over by their paddy wagon, which I didn't think could pull over cars, but nonetheless. But no, I, we literally were parking right where I live. And then, like, we're about. To, I'm about to get out of the car, and I see the, the the lights behind me. I'm like, I can't get out of the car because they'll like they'll shoot me or they'll like they'll wrestle me to the ground because I'm getting out of my car. They yeah, don't they know that nervous. I live there. They yeah, so I'm like, I have to I have to stay in my car outside of my home because mm -hmm. they're behind me. So he uh, he issues you a ticket for having this uninspected vehicle because you hadn't gotten around to inspecting it yet. It's a yeah. yearly requirement here in New Hampshire. Now, uh, hopefully we'll see that change with more liberty activists getting elected and working within the system. One of the proposals has been to cut it back to every other year and, of course, to repeal it entirely. So it would be nice to see those things happen. Of course, as you might imagine, the auto repair centers are very interested in continuing Well, of this course, law. yeah. I have to go there and pay them money. And of course, they're going right. to try and throw some other you know, repair that you need in order to pass that inspection. Right, because they can essentially hold your car hostage if they determine that it needs certain repairs in order to get this sticker. So you tell the cop that you're going tomorrow morning. You pull your phone out yeah. and you're like, look, here's my calendar. I'll show it to you. Seriously, I'm going tomorrow morning to get this taken care of. And you essentially you ask him repeatedly, like, well, why don't you use your discretion here, man? Well, here's the thing. Like, when, uh, when I first got here... When I was driving this car, I bought it out here in Keene. I drove it back. Didn't have plates yet. Didn't have any uh, uh, residency, nothing. And uh, I got pulled over by Manch PD. Mm -hmm. At that time, they gave me a summons just like they did this time. But the officer was like, look, if you can prove that you you know, you know, you registered a car, just, you know, bring it into uh, the Valley Street Police Department and we will, you know, I'll, we'll throw it out. 
I'm like, okay. that they did that for me. And I, I, I give them, you know, some credit. They, uh, not that I want them to even give me, sure. actually have the right to travel, they period. They didn't take it to the wall for they it, didn't, They, they could have yeah. arrested me or at least bare minimum stole my car when sure. they didn't do that. Um, I've had situations similar where I've been, like, noticed that the cops in New Hampshire just seem a little bit nicer than cops in other places, like where a situation similar had happened. I forget what the violation was, but some sort of thing that could have gotten us towed. They towed the car. The cop was willing to allow the tow to tow back to the house rather than to a tow yard. I find local local city police officers a lot nicer than Stadies. Stadies are a whole other breed. Mm -hmm. So this was city cop. Yeah, it's a city cop, yeah. And this Uh, is the biggest city in New Hampshire, so if the cops are going to be bad— they're more likely to be bad in a larger department. Absolutely. Um, one now, of the- mind you, I've had bad experiences with Managed PD. Sure. This is actually one of the better experiences that I've had with Managed PD. What was PD. amazing about this experience, and it's an eight-minute long video, so that's why I'm not going to play it on the air, but uh, it, you should watch it. What's an amazing thing about this is how long the cop lingers for this uh, essentially repetitive conversation. Well, what's crazy is there's like a, a, a freak like blizzard for like 10 minutes right when this guy's outside of my it's car. It's cold. Yeah, yeah and it's yeah. like five degrees, snow's blowing in one direction, and he's just there holding the... Uh, <laughs> My extortion ticket. He's trying to get right, me. I'm not grabbing cracked. it. It's, it's cracked. cracked. It's like an inch crack. Yeah. yeah, it's just an inch crack. And I'm not. I'm refusing to take it. I'm. Just, I just keep talking. Well, and, you don't want to refuse to take well, it. Well, I didn't say but, I refused. Right, right, right. Yeah, you know, I, I, I pretty much see how far I can go with it until yeah, I finally. You tried to reason with him. Yeah, I did try to reason with him. Tried yeah, to reason yeah as a human you being. used reason and rationality to try and aid you, and he wasn't listening well, to reason. There was a moment where he kind of got outside of his script. And because uh, I uh, I tried to ask him oh, if he yeah, gave me the same compromise moment. that the cop had originally given me back when I moved here, where like they'll throw it out if I just prove that I I've, I'm doing this edict, like you know I, I can prove it, then they would just throw it out. And he actually steps back and like thinks about it for like thirty he seconds. He seemed like thirty yeah, seconds. Yeah, I um I actually I don't. He said no. He did I, say no. He I, went straight back into a script. I don't want to <laughs> say I don't want to say that you did anything wrong, but I did want to give you a little tidbit of advice. Please do, because I this is um, a learning hospital for me too. Right, and I think we can all learn from each online. other's experiences. And the one thing that I saw that um, that I would have done differently is when you made that that proposition to him, um, and he paused and started thinking about it. I wouldn't have said anything. Oh, I know. Because I, that I right there, first. that right there is the verbal game of chicken, and it. They talk about it in how to win friends and influence yeah. people. Um, and you want to get somebody right there to the point where they are thinking about it, and the next person to talk loses. loses. It's yeah. true. And so that oh, was I, your moment, and I, I wish you hadn't given it up because you gave him. You I gave didn't him the notice upper that hand. Either. I That's did. I did. Yeah, you gave I him the upper hand. But you were Fair nervous, point. and I think other than that, you handled it brilliantly. I was. So Super proud to know you and know that, you know, my friend and somebody that I know is able to handle a situation like that so well. My favorite line from the video was, quote, did you sign up to protect people or hurt people? Because this is hurting me. You said this to him right at the very end of the video. He said it several times. No, that exact line, I think, only came up one time. And it was just so poignant because it really, it really boiled down the situation. Yeah, absolutely. It was a beautiful line. It's over... And again, it's over. Uh, the, the only reason why he pulled me over is because there's a different sticker on my car. That's that's the reason why. I think it's important yeah. to do what you did and to give these officers feedback to let them know you're hurting me and it's not okay and I yeah. don't appreciate it. This is not the kind of service that I'm looking for from you. And I think if more people would give them feedback like that, it would get really hard for them to to actually do that role of their job. I mean, if a cop actually turns around and somehow helps me in some sort of situation, I'll I will say thank you for helping me. Yeah, but and- this is not help. It's not, you know, it's it, it, it caused me to be late for work and he was stealing money from me. Right. I think it's important to let them know when they're doing the right thing, which every now and then they do, you know, go after a real bad guy or something. And also let them know when then we think they're doing the wrong thing. Rob Mathias from The Rebel Love Show at rebelloveshow.com. Thanks yep. for coming on, man. Thank you. We're actually going to bring your cohort in here in moments, Shire Dude. Yeah, we're taking over Free Talk Live. Uh, in moments. Your calls are uh. certainly welcome. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can bring up anything here. It's Free Talk Live. We're coming up. Did you know by age 50, half of all men have an enlarged prostate? This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. 
Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-881-1075. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-881-1075. That's 1-800-881-1075. Call 1-800-881-1075. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Gabino lives in Palcapata, Peru. He buys old appliances like irons, radios, and TV sets, fixes them up, and resells them. He saw an opportunity to expand his business and needed a loan to buy more appliances. Free Talk Live helped him get a loan, and the expansion was a success. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time, get a free pound to try out the subscription, cancel anytime, coffee.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand it's about demonstrating to the entire country that, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited here to take control of the airwaves. 855-450-FREE. That is the toll-free number. 855-450-3733. Join us online. Drop by freetalklive.com to enjoy the features you'll find there. And once again, that's freetalklive.com. With you in studio tonight, it's Ian. And Lauren Rumpler. We also have Shire Dude with us. Hey, Shire Dude. Hey, guys. <laughs> How's it going? It's been a while since you've been on the show. What was that? Pork Fest, I think. Pork right. Fest. Yeah, that was my first appearance on Free Talk Live. And and you are a busy, yeah. busy man. I mean, you've only <sighs> been in New Hampshire for, what, since six May. months? So a little so over six months. Seven, eight months, something yeah. like that. Um, not even a full year yet. And <laughs> you have jumped into the deep end of activism yeah. Where'd you come from? I came from California. Where in California? Um, uh, like L.A., Orange County, back and forth between the two. It's a big place, right? Like, that's a huge downsizing. Was there culture shock for you? Um, you know, Manchester, I, I've explained it. Uh, um, it's kind of like a suburb of California. It's similar. <laughs> like, the houses are shaped a little differently, and, oh, golly, it gets cold here. But other than that, it's it's pretty similar. Golly? 
Yeah. Well, he is on the radio. You do I, have to. I've never heard you say golly. Oh, really? Um, for those who don't know, this is my best friend oh, okay. in the whole world. That's good to know that. So I want to talk more about you in a moment here, but we've actually got Jason who is on the line in Maryland. And Jason, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian Shire Dude and Lauren Rumpler. Hello there. How are you? Hey, Jason. Go ahead with your thoughts. Uh, you were talking about getting pulled over. Uh, listen, don't plead or argue with the cop. It freaks them out. Trust me, I've been through a few things in my life. Uh, there is something you can do, and they'll, they'll uh, not the cops, they, they kind of respect it, but the mainstream media and everybody else call, call you a quack, a paper terrorist, a fruit job, whatever. But no, actually, it's very valid, and it dates of uh, uh, fact before this country was founded, even. Uh, you can simply, uh, as long as you haven't done any any harm or, or uh, uh, caused an injury or financial injury to somebody when you're pulled over, you can simply, when you sign a ticket, and I want you to pay attention, uh, write the letters UD, circle it, and write per UCC 1-308. That's the Universal so Commercial Code. So this is a uh, conspiracy theory that uh, is in, you it's know. Not it's not a conspiracy theory. I've won three cases with it. Do you have and proof? Due to a cut, uh, yeah, the fact that uh, I don't have any points in my life. No, that's not proof. That I... So when I say proof, what I mean is, like, did you get video of your interaction with a cop? Did you get video in the court? Do you have evidence, documented evidence that proves no, your claim? No, the whole point, the, the whole point is, is uh, they drop the, the claim against you. So you're you saying that, just to clarify, you're saying that you write some stuff with the UCC, the Uniform Commercial Code, uh, on a ticket, and that they'll drop the ticket and that you'll never actually no, end up— you had, you have to then what you have to do that that starts the the ball rolling then you have to take it the next thing you do is you make a claim against them uh how so do you that, do that you know now you put steady putting it in common law court instead of sticking around in their administrative which is a version of admiralty court uh, you put it back in common law, and you you, de you declare it. There's, how do you, you do that? Can you give us a, a simple bit? process as to how one would make a claim against the ticket in common law court? Okay, you don't make a claim against the ticket. You make a claim against another party. Okay. Uh, and uh, you. So who would the other party be? The yeah. officer, the police department. Usually, the officer it can also it can also be the judge. It depends on the circumstances. Do you uh, recommend? Uh, okay, so so you make a claim. Does that mean you're filing a case in court? Yes, and you uh -huh. and not, what does that cost? All the time, you you do it in the same court. What does that cost to file uh, a case in court in uh, let's see Maryland where you live? Uh, I have. Do it because of a cock up uh, that I just found out about. It uh, would be the third time I've done it in my life. It's going to cost me about forty nine dollars to do it. So you uh, so it costs you fifty dollars to file in court. <clears throat> so therefore, right. the court gets money out of you, but the police department yeah. then then you're claiming that the police department then drops the original case against you after you file it. They don't case. always, but what it does. Oh, they don't they, always. Uh, uh huh. Okay. Uh, so no, this you have not you have to. Uh, you have to uh, prove and, you know, take the control of the court as the sovereign. Yeah, sure. Uh, and this all sounds very clear, interesting. You know what I'd like to see you start. do, Jason? Here's my challenge to you. I want to see you go ahead and just go get yourself another speeding ticket and then document the process from start to to finish, because there's a lot of people like you who call into this show and make claims about, oh, you just have to write this or deliver this paperwork here or oh, no, whatever, it, it, and you it's see, see this and that. Complicated than that. You, oh, it's always very up, complicated, and that's one of the that's that's one of the problems. Is it's always very complicated. So that way, when somebody does some, somebody tries this, what you're saying, and I wouldn't recommend anyone try what you're saying, um, but when somebody does try it, because I've tried some of this stuff. Uh, then, you know, they'll fail, and then they'll come back and they'll say, oh, well, Jason told told us wrong on Free Talk Live. And then, you, you know, the people who advocate these theories will almost always come back and say, oh, well, you didn't do it wrong. You forgot to file the triplicate copy of this with the Secretary of State, and, you know, it needed to be notarized as well. You know, so there's always something else that, you know, the, these gurus claim I that uh, the people did. I'm, so here's what I'm I want you to do. You, here's I'm what I want you to do, Jason. Do you have a YouTube channel? Constantly, I watch it. No, no, no. 
You, you need to get your own YouTube channel. You need to get oh, no, a video. I don't have time for that. I work oh, 85 see. hours a week. Great. Well, okay, then you can't uh, expect, if you're not willing to put any effort into convincing people of your methods, then you can't expect anybody to really take you seriously, and I wish you the best with your methods. <clears throat> so, Shire Dude, Lauren Rumpler, have you come across these uh, courtroom conspiracy theories? I heard the, the UCC code before. I actually think I heard about I've it on Free Talk this Live. This was back in, like, 2012. Mm-hmm. I was still living in California, and I actually tried it. Really? Because I heard it on here from this, like, you know, like one of those, those guys. And then I heard it from someone at work at the same time. And she was like, well, I'm friends with a cop. He told me about this, and he told me all you have to do yeah, is write this right. magic code on your parking ticket, and it goes away. Uh huh. So what did you do? So I wrote it. And, and, the, and what did it, you get? A ticket? What kind of ticket? It was a parking ticket. Okay. I think it was like street sweeping. Yeah. And um, so she said, you got to write it in red ink and mail it back to them. <laughs> like it's some like, you know, Harry Potter magic trick. Yep. And so I write it and I mail it back to them and I got no response. Mm-hmm. And then um, later on, I got a letter in the mail saying I had um, an outstanding parking ticket. But this was a letter about a different one. OK. So I went back to pay it. And then the lady there was like, you have two. Uh-huh. And so I'm like, oh, that just means it never went away. And so I ended up paying it off. I caved at that point. So it didn't work. So it didn't work at all, but it was a nice thought. But if, if we still had Jason on the line, I'm sure he would tell you five different things that right. you did wrong. <laughs> and so that's why I always challenge these people to just provide some evidence. I mean, look, I know you're in Maryland or wherever it is you are where it's very difficult to get a camera in a courtroom. Most places it's like impossible or near impossible to get a camera in a courtroom. So it can be difficult to document this process completely. So move to New Hampshire, bring all your UCC wizardry with you up here, and then I'll come to if you if you yeah, go I'll to film court. Me in right. If you go to court in Keene, New Hampshire, or in the vicinity of Keene, New Hampshire, I will take time out of my schedule to show up with a video camera and record whatever court wizardry you can give me copies of all the documents you filed with the state, and we'll see if your little techniques work i'm really really i'd love for someone to come up and do this you know shire dude this is before your time up here but there was a guy one of these guru types who actually came up here at one point and he came and he showed up at social sundays which is like this weekly thing that we have here in Keene for people to just kind of hang out and get to know one another he shows up at social sundays and he's like uh, talking his guru talk like oh, i am uh, you know a sovereign and the- look i like the idea of being sovereign no doubt i mean i like the idea of being of the king of your own domain that's cool but, uh, you know, to, to think that the government's going to let you out of their tickets because you make some sort of ridiculous claim, I still have yet to see the proof of that. So this guy's talking his game about how he's this guru and he does all, he's been doing this in California forever and this and that. I'm like, oh, great. Well, I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing if you end up in court here so we can record that and actually get some evidence. Well, the dude moved out to what's called the domes. Now, the Domes is basically a, a place in the woods in New Hampshire where multiple liberty activists live. That's a good place to go and disappear and, you know, not actually get tickets for doing anything because you're living in the woods and you're not around an enforcement apparatus like Manchester police or Keene police. And so the dude, you know, lived out of the domes for a while. And then, I don't know, several months later, a phone message comes through Pork 411, the messaging system, from this guy. And I'll tell you what he said on the message here in a moment. Uh, We'll share that in uh, just a moment here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And maybe you've tried one of these guru approaches. How'd it work out for you? Free Talk Live. It's the end of year clearance sale at Lumber Liquidators. We'd rather sell it than count it. So every floor and every store is on sale, and it all must go. Get incredible deals on first quality flooring from just 35 cents a square foot. Beautiful three quarter inch pre finished solid hardwood is just $179. Save even more on all liquidation clearance and closeouts. If it's in stock, it's on sale, and pay no interest until January 2017. Don't miss these end of year deals on over 400 floors. Visit lumberliquidators.com to find a store near you. Well, here. You know, I've talked before about Australian Dream, the effective arthritis pain relief cream that doesn't burn, isn't greasy, and has no odor. Now there's new Australian Dream back pain cream with all those great benefits. But this penetrating formula can help relieve your simple back pain. And it's backed by an empty jar guarantee. If you're not satisfied, you can send back the empty jar for a full refund. But I don't think you will, because Australian Dream really works. Don't let back pain ruin your day. Get Australian Dream Back Pain Cream at Walgreens. Hey, everyone. I'm having lots of fun with my new Ghost 80% AR-15. This baby shoots like a dream. Hey, thanks, Guns80.com. You know, friends ask me all the time why I wanted a Ghost AR-15. That's easy. You see, my buddy Mark kept telling me that I'd better go to Guns80.com 
get myself a ghost AR-15 before they outlawed them. I thought he was just paranoid, so I ignored him. Well, at first. But then I started hearing government media types talking about making guns illegal, about the president signing on to a U.N. treaty that could take my gun rights away. You know, it really bugged me. So I dug in, I did the research, and I realized that Mark was right all along. I know now that having an unregistered ghost AR-15 is the right answer. I'm a proud 80% ghost AR-15 convert. You should be, too. The answer is really simple. Get your ghost AR-15 at guns80.com. The big sale is on right now. Go to guns80.com. That's guns80.com. Guns80. The number's 80.com. Does this ever happen to you? Moments after you're introduced to someone, you forget his or her name. It's a common faux pas you'll want to avoid, especially if you're a job seeker. And even if you're not, here's a tip. As you are being introduced, and while you're still shaking hands, smiling, and making eye contact, say the person's name aloud. Not only does that make a deposit in your memory bank, it acknowledges the other person. And that is more than a nuance, as is maintaining eye contact. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. Cutting through the clutter rather than blending into the blah, blah, blah will help you connect better no matter what the conversation. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You're invited here to take control of the airwaves at 855-450-FREE. Yes, you can uh, tell us about your crazy conspiracy theory if you want. Uh, Look, I want to believe this stuff works. I really do. I'd love... To have somebody prove one of these conspiracy theories. Only if you wear the tinfoil hat while you're doing it. Well, that's about as ridiculous as they seem to be. These are we're talking specifically not about like 9/11 or things like that, uh, not big conspiracy theories, but like the courtroom conspiracies, these legal land conspiracies, the idea that you can just utter some words in court or write some words down on a ticket or on a piece of paper and file it in the right place, and then all of a sudden your troubles with the government will go away. You, you know, I don't even think it's just the legal conspiracies. I really, you know, for me. The conspiracy side of the liberty movement, I know that Alex Jones and all those get get people involved in the liberty movement. It's true. But, you know, part of me feels like it it, it makes us difficult with, with the limited amount of actual evidence we have. Um, I mean, I know that, I mean, it's obvious that 9-11 didn't happen the way that the government says it did. It's obvious. But but to make claims. I'll give you that much, but I yeah, don't know what really happened. Right, right, right. And to make make assumptions about what happened, which is what a lot of what Alex Jones is, is to make a lot of bold leaps. Sure. Um, I think that really ruins our legitimacy, honestly. I think that that, 
that hurts us. Well, first of all, Alex Jones isn't, uh, I don't know who us is, but I know that Alex Jones isn't Sorry. someone I would consider to be a liberty-minded person. I meant he, the people in the liberty movement. Right. But, I mean, just, know, to, just to be clear, like, I don't mind Alex Jones. I've met him personally. He was very nice when I, when I met him, and I appreciate a lot of the work he's done over the years on the police state. I think he's done some good reporting here and there, but it's like what you said, when he fills in the blanks with the conspiracy, yes, that's that the problem. kind of go off the radar. And I have no problem with showing the evidence. It's really just when the conspiracy gets involved. I don't like conspiracy, but I do like showing facts. And the facts point out that the government is lying. Were you ever a conspiracy guy, Shire Dude? Um, for, I don't know, maybe a few minutes on YouTube here okay. and there. <laughs> okay, but good. I think I skipped most of that. That's good to know. And yeah. there are a lot of people who don't come into the liberty movement from the conspiracy realm. I, you know, I've, I've voiced my concerns about the conspiracy realm. I think it's a dangerous one. I think it's a defeatist kind of uh, group of people who believe, you know, the world's controlled by some sort of group of uh, madmen meeting in a smoky, a smoke-filled dark room. And, you know, that they can't do anything about that. So they go hide in their parents' basement and share YouTube videos. Uh, it's a scary you know, position to have to think the government is that powerful that they can yes. hide all of those things. I, exactly. I think Shire Dude's hiding something from you because I think this oh, really? man right here is the source of most of the conspiracy <laughs> theories. Um, he has spread the conspiracy on the internet that I like tomatoes, and and that is strictly yeah. conspiracy. I do not <laughs> like, don't tomatoes. like tomatoes. Huh? I do not like tomatoes. <laughs> well, you learn something new Debunked. every night here <laughs> on Free Talk Live. So I'd like to encourage, you know, the gurus out there who who claim to know everything about how to get out of things in court. Just make some YouTube videos, you know, show the process. Let's see you getting the ticket. Let's see you going to court. Let's see you getting this dismissed. Should Evidence. be easy, right? I've seen some really good videos of this kind of kooky stuff from Sovereign Tactics. Have you ever Randy seen Randy Stroud. Yeah. <gasps> Yeah, Randy. he's interesting. He's Randy's interesting. Great. When it works, when some of the stuff that he does works, I freak out. I'm like, wow, this, you know, well, this guy's figuring he's it out. Doing. He's, he's a pioneer, man. Well, he he actually has the legal know-how to to get through this stuff. He's a great guy. Um, I want to have him on my show. That's I, what makes him credible is that he actually does seem to try it. this stuff. Now, have you seen him go into court? Like, has he managed to do that? I don't. I don't think I've seen a video of him in court. What have you? What has he been filming? Because I've just seen him filming he, himself talking about. He, does he mainly that stuff. does legal counsel. Um, I've seen him walk around with his common law ID, and probably the most impressive thing he's done with that is buy alcohol with it. Okay. So, I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, that's a step. I have to say I haven't watched all of his videos, so okay. I, I haven't seen that one yeah. happen, but I do know that he seems to be like somebody who's really interested in these sorts of things, who's willing to apply them and try them. Like Another guy like that is Jay Noon, who lives in Massachusetts. He was a guy at Porkfest this year who was selling hamburgers outside the campfire on a couple nights. Mm -hmm. Great guy. He actually put his own house on the line to further along his theory about you know not paying property taxes etc he unfortunately lost his house and then lost the subsequent appeal to federal court on that so you know despite the hours and hours and hours i mean this guy you talk to jay noon he sounds like he knows his stuff and i believe he does he's done hundreds of hours of research on this and ultimately it you know he it's lost rough, his house. Yeah. So uh, I had heard rumor Randy Stroud, sovereign, the sovereign tactics guy, was going to move to New Hampshire. Hmm, I wonder who you heard, I that, heard that from. I heard that from you, actually. Might be from me. So, I, he is, you know, um, I just messaged him. I've encouraged um, him to move up here as well because, like, you know, same offer applies. Come here. I'll, sh I'll record well, you in court. He'd have so much Shire more protection record you in here. Manchester. Yeah. In those situations, Ian, he'd have people to back him up. I mean, I Ian, you're very influential and awesome, but you, you got to remember that, you know, with the uh, the handsome liberty movement men, I, I got a little more clout <laughs> in that field. <laughs> well, whatever you can do then, Lauren, to uh, I'm working on it. Because we need people. I mean, look, we need people who are willing to try different things. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm certainly not going to say that you know being totally inside the system is the way to go. It's just that seems to be the best way to you know get a win under your belt in the court system. Like when I went to a speeding ticket trial and the uh, bureaucrat the State trooper didn't show up, motion to dismiss, and that motion was granted. So, you know, if you know a little bit, that can help you about the system. And I don't think you should have to spend hundreds of hours researching. If there's a process that works, show us the process, keep it simple, because not everybody's going to have time to do all this research to learn and become a guru. 
This should be simple, right? Yeah. It should be simple. Anyway, toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. You can take control here. So we were talking about you, Shire Dude. You came from California. You moved to New Hampshire in the summertime in May of, uh, of 2014. Yeah, man. And... Your name wasn't originally Shire Dude, but you are changing it legally. <laughs> I'm yeah, I'm planning on changing my name legally. It is actually legally right now Andrew Vermilio. Okay, which Ooh, is I like a mouthful, and um, it's tough because I'm trying to get my name out there to become a freelance. Um, well, I am doing it already. I'm I'm doing freelance editing and filming, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of activists out there who film a lot of hours of footage and they never film it, and then people never watch it because Wait, it's, they never edit it. Yeah, or they right. never edit it. That's what yeah. I mean. Yeah, people never watch it because of that, because it's just raw footage sitting on a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I've been doing that, and uh, Shire Do just it has more. It's um, it's got more oomph in the advertising. World, it's you know? definitely unique. Yeah, right? people yeah. are going to remember Shire Dude. Although Vermilio is certainly an unusual name. It's unique, but it's hard to spell. Italy? Is that Italian? Ill, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's actually a province in Italy. In I north. did not know that. Yeah. So does that mean that your family's like from royal blood or I something? I want to go like... there and find out. <laughs> <laughs> Do you speak um, Italian? I'm so up for that trip. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah. So, uh, so ShireDude.com? ShireDude.com, yes. And what will people find if they go to ShireDude.com? So far, I have my show, which is also called Shire Dude. Mm -hmm. um, this is which a is, uh, every so often show or weekly? How often are you putting out new episodes? I try like? doing it weekly, but I've been I've been slacking because I actually have two other shows that I'm doing now. I just got here in May. It I got three so shows that I'm putting out. Yeah, right? This is ridiculous. You are one of the busiest <laughs> uh, new movers out there, definitely. I mean, you're almost competing with Derek J for busiest media guy, although he's got six <laughs> shows now, so, oh so you've got gosh. a little bit... You, but you're doing more video yeah. work, and that takes more time. You know, if you're doing video production, there's a lot more time that you invest into just producing a five-minute clip right. as opposed to getting it, on and yakking on a microphone. My newest show, It's Like This Too, which mm -hmm. is about Free State Project Early Movers. Um, it's great, that, by it's the way. It's five minutes, and it takes hours to mm. edit those. It How many really... hours would you say you pour into production of one episode of It's Like This Too? I've done up to From five. From shooting t through the final... Oh, just editing is up to five. Yeah, editing, okay. And then shooting, we'll do these big days where we uh, try to get as many interviews as possible. Right. And so last time we went from like, I don't know, the a.m. to you know late and 7 p.m. or something like mm. that. Yeah. Now, that's appearing on the Free State Project YouTube channel. Oh, but you might as well get it from freekeen.com. This is true. Yeah. You are one of the you are probably the newest <laughs> blogger at freekeen.com yeah. as a matter of fact, which is great because, you know, then that gives you a little bit of extra exposure. Freekeen's not the biggest website in the world, but it is arguably one of the biggest in New Hampshire, and so, you know, you get a few more extra I've seen eyeballs. a bump in my views, yeah. Have you? Good. Since I've been on there. Good, good. I mean, it's usually only worth like a couple hundred, but, you know, it's a couple hundred more than you had. So. Yeah, man. I appreciate you cranking the content out there. And, of course, Lauren, your website is going to change soon. So what are you promoting tonight? What's the... What oh, you, I, well, we I can't mean... can't talk about what's I can't, coming I can't, up. I, no, I can't. Um, it's just... Big changes, though. Oh, my Very God. Exciting. It's so huge. And, you know, it's been really, really hard. Um, you know, even just staying undercover for a while... Um, you know, because everybody wants to, I, I mean, there's been a few shows that have invited me on that I've had to say no to. Just because you're um, so busy with the the new launch? Well, not you? only that, but I'm, I'm kind of hiding. And um, I I mean, I, I'm wearing a hat tonight. Right. And, um, you know, it, that's intentional. And, um, <laughs> I mean, there's a there's a lot of stuff coming up. And, All um, right, well, we'll talk more about it when yeah. you're ready for that because you're not ready quite yet. But you not did quite show yet, me, but... You did show me some exciting previews, and that's cool. Oh, so we'll talk my God, so many exciting things. <laughs> All right, more coming up here. Hour number three is on the way. Plenty of time for you with your thoughts. Lauren, you're going to tell us about Tamir Rice. He's the 12-year-old who was shot to death by cops. We'll give you details. It's Free Talk Live. Yep. Kay Oliver is part of the Toyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Thursday, January 8th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.50 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,210 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $284. Antiwar.com reports at least 37 people were killed and 66 others wounded yesterday in the Yemeni capital city of Sana'a when a suicide bomber rammed a minibus packed full of explosives into a line of recruits at the nation's police academy. At least three of the slain were civilian bystanders, while the overwhelming majority were would-be recruits for the police force. No group has yet claimed responsibility. It is believed, however, that the attack is the work of Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, which has launched similar strikes in the past. Police are operating under the assumption of Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula having done it. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula is believed to have enjoyed a surge in recruitment in recent weeks owing to the increased influence of Shiite Houthi rebels. Sunni tribesmen have been backing Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula as a sort of counterbalance. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. Reuters reports foie gras is back on the menu in California after a federal judge on Wednesday struck down the state's controversial law banning the production and sale of the culinary delicacy that comes from the enlarged livers of ducks and geese that have been force-fed corn. While some California chefs plan to celebrate the return of fatty duck liver, animal rights activists said the state's hard-fought foie gras battle was far from over. California's bill outlawing foie gras passed in 2004, but the ban did not go into effect until 2012. Foie gras producers and restaurants for years have lobbied to remove the ban, which gave rise to underground duck easies that offered foie gras or sold it as unlisted menu items. In their latest legal battle, an organization from Canada, New York's Hudson Valley Foie Gras and Los Angeles-based Hot's Restaurant Group argued that California's sell restriction ran afoul of federal law and the U.S. Constitution. And on Wednesday, U.S. District Court Judge Stephen Wilson ruled that the ban was at odds with federal law overseeing the sale and distribution of poultry products. Jot Condi, president and chief executive of the California Restaurant Association, a longtime foe of the ban, said, It's a good day for restaurants. 
For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports a study evaluating breaking news stories found Muslims are overrepresented on U.S. television as perpetrators of domestic terrorism, while black people are underrepresented as both criminals and victims. The study by University of Illinois Communications Professor Travis Dixon was conducted between 2008 and 2012 and evaluated 146 episodes of news programs that focus on breaking news. Of the stories about domestic terrorist suspects, 81% were Muslim. FBI data collected from the same time period indicates 6% of suspects were actually Muslim. Dixon said white supremacists were more likely to take part in domestic terrorism than Muslims during that time frame. Dixon said African Americans were less likely to be portrayed as homicide victims on network and cable news, 22%, than to be homicide victims, according to crime reports, 48%. White people, the study found, were just as likely to be victims or perpetrators of crime in the news as they are in real life. Dixon said data from his study supported the hypothesis that Latinos would be overrepresented as undocumented immigrants. He found that among immigrants described in those news programs as undocumented, 99% were identifiable as Latino. According to the Pew Hispanic Center, 78.8% of undocumented immigrants in 2012 were from Latin American countries. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A majority of Americans are pointing to Friday's tragedy as a clear call for major reforms in everything, or literally anything at all that might prevent acts of horrifying senseless violence. According to a recent ONN poll, the nation is united in saying that the key to preventing future tragedies is a drastic change in gun control, mental health care, school security, media coverage, violent entertainment, the fragility of the human condition, and really so many other things we probably haven't even thought of. Yet, Jesus. The Randolph Center for Public Health and Safety also released a statement saying, quote, if you look at statistics regarding gun violence in the United States, you'll see the recent shooting is a clear cry for any thing at all to please, please be different. In Washington, lawmakers have reached a bipartisan agreement that the U.S. desperately needs tighter firearm restrictions or looser firearm restrictions or, honestly, whatever option just makes these things stop, do that one. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can dial in toll-free to take control of the airwaves at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio tonight, you've got me, Ian, and... Shire, dude. And Lauren Rumpler. So we'll take your calls about anything you want to discuss. Lauren, I know that uh, hot on your mind right now, besides Penn Jillette, who apparently you're chatting with, um, is Tamir Rice. Now, Tamir Rice... We've talked about his case previously here on Free Talk Live. The video uh, was controversial when it came out, but apparently now it's even more so because the full video has come out. This young man was shot to death by the police in Cleveland, Ohio, and for the dastardly crime of being in a park, apparently. Uh, Lauren, can you kind of recap the Tamir Rice situation and then tell us what's new? Yeah, so um, Tamir was this 12-year-old boy. And they allegedly uh, got a tip from someone stating that he was carrying a gun. However, they added on to this tip that they weren't certain that it wasn't a fake gun. Mm -hmm. They are claiming that they never got that second part of the message and that they missed it. Um, you know, maybe because law enforcement never actually listens. Um, but, you know, whole nother rant. Um and, um, you know, this, this little boy, um, it was 12 and the police just pulled up beside him and didn't even talk to him and just 
They shot him. Yeah, the video was pretty Without shocking. Even talking to him. Shire, dude, have you seen this? I footage? haven't seen it yet. No. Okay, so uh, we'll probably actually have to pull makes it up me really you. sad. We'll, we'll have to pull it up for you so you can get some idea of this. But essentially, yeah. the guy, this young man is in a park. He's alone in the park. The again, the allegations were that he was waving a gun around. He did. Turned out he had a BB gun. Correct. Yeah. Is that right? And so he's waving this gun around in the park, allegedly, according to the caller. When the dude, police, just being a kid. When the dispatcher gave the information to the officers, the dispatcher conveniently left out the information that it might not be a real gun. So the officers rolled up fast, like in the video, like they just come to a quick stop right in the middle of the park. They're like driving in the actual yeah. grounds of the park. They're not in the street. They roll up, they just kind of throw the doors open, and then the, the kid's shot. Like No, literally. no, no, no. So what they did, they roll up, they... One of them jumps out, throws him to the ground. He's got him on the ground. And no, the other officer, the other officer, he was he was already restrained. The other officer comes over and he's behind the car. And they, I mean, I'm sure they intentionally kept Maybe him behind I've the car. S- and then he just, you know, puts his gun up and shoots him in the head. That's not what I remember seeing from the video. In the video I saw. It- he was already subdued. In the video I saw, the kid, it looks like the kid gets shot right as soon as the cop is like climbing out of the car. Now, maybe I misread the video. It is a very small video and it's it's also very distant. It looked to me as if they subdued him. Otherwise, they dragged him by the car and then shot him again. Okay, so we'll we'll have to pull up the video because the video I'm recalling and the and we are talking about the same situation. Yes. I'm 100 certain. Oh, absolutely. The video I'm recalling. It's hard to really tell it what's is. going on because it's taken from a distance. It's a security camera, and on they're a doing building. it all behind the police car, which is very nefarious. Well, right. So the kid's walking outward toward the police cruiser as it rolls up. The door opens. I think it's the passenger side cop. As as that cop's getting out of the car, the kid doubles over and falls like he's been shot. Oh, you're wow. saying that's not the the shoot? I don't I don't think so. I think because they dragged him down. But I mean, we can watch no, it again. No, this kid goes to the ground without the cops coming anywhere near him in this video. I'm I'm 100 certain on my recollection. of Either this. way, I mean, this kid. I mean, they the fact he that went he for went. His belt. The fact that he went over to the car and didn't run away, this kid is not only not resistant, right. he's also clearly considers them to be, you know, he's probably been taught to to think that the police are there to protect him. Well, right, he obviously and, doesn't and think these, he's done something wrong, right? I mean, these he'd police run away. take advantage of the fact that this kid has been taught that the well, officers mean safety. They were scared for their lives. They thought he was 20 years old and that he was going for a gun in his waistband. That's why they had to shoot him to death. Absolutely wrong. I mean, he just, I mean, he walked straight over to the car voluntarily. He never raised the gun towards them. He was a, obviously a little kid. There's no way they could have confused a 12 year old for a 20 year old. They are making this up. So. I don't want to, you know, give the cops credit here, but I'll point out no. what Mark has pointed out before, and that is that people who are of a different race are notoriously bad at determining the age of someone of that of a different race. That seems fair, yeah. So maybe he's an old-looking twelve-year-old. I don't know, but there's okay. one frame in the video where it does look like he's going for something in his waistband. So maybe that claim of the police is true as well. But still, to me, that doesn't justify what it is that they did to him. And what I think that you know seemed like a better approach would be to me is that if they were going to be rolling up on the set, so to speak, they should have gotten on their PA system and you know keyed up on their PA and said, "All right, put your hands in the air." You know, give them some sort of ask command. for some sort of cooperation. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna ask you this, and I think we should put the picture up and and you ask people on the up, page. Yeah. But does that boy look 20 years old to you? Uh, no, we we can put this up on our Facebook, Google Plus, and Twitter. Now, I don't know at what no. age that photo was no. taken, so you know it's hard to say. And look, I don't necessarily believe the police's claims here. I'm just kind of giving the the counter story. Now, there's news though, Lauren, because what they had released previously yes. was a very short clip. Yes. Of the cops rolling up, the kid doubling over, mm-hmm. and then the cops kind of milling about for just a moment. Now the 30-minute full video is available, and what is it yes. that it reveals? And the attorney is saying that it's it's the cruelest thing he's ever seen. 
Um, and so this is a article from Reason, and it says full. It's titled "Full Tamir Rice Video Released." Attorney calls it cruelest thing I've ever seen, and you will too. Um, reporters for Cleveland.com obtained extended footage of the killing of Tamir Rice. The full video demonstrates police officers' callous indifference to the boy they had wrongly shot. The two cops allowed him to bleed for several minutes. The first person to administer aid to Rice was actually an FBI agent who happened upon the the Hmm. scene while the officers stood around doing nothing. Wow. Well, that's not quite right. They did something. They intercepted Tamir's sister as she ran to help him, knocking her to the ground, wrestling with her, held her down, handcuffed her, and placed her in a squad car a mere 10 feet away from her mortally wounded brother. Mm -hmm. And it was there that she waited, according to Cleveland.com. Cleveland police were responding to an emergency call claiming that Rice had a gun, although the caller made clear that the gun was very possibly a fake replica weapon. Police officials have insisted that the responding officers were unaware of that suspicion, however. Not only that, but they've also, of course, claimed that the officers were totally within their rights uh, to you know, shoot this yeah. young man completely dead. And so what you're saying is that the revelation in this full-length video is that the police did nothing apparent to try to help this young man. They just simply let him bleed out and die. They didn't do anything. I wouldn't say it's the cruelest video I've ever seen. I've certainly seen some serious police cruelty. Then again, you can't really see anything. I yeah, mean, it's yeah. really small, but it's says regardless, they shot him within moments of arriving on the scene. Uh, Timothy Lohman, the officer who killed Rice, had a record of mental instability and was previously forced to resign from a different police uh, force for his dismissal oh, gun man. performance. After shooting Rice, the officers failed to administer first aid for the subsequent four minutes. Eventually, an They're FBI not agent... Obligated to. No never, that's what they claimed. Yeah, right. yeah right. that's this what they is, claimed. This goes back around to what we were saying earlier, where the courts have ruled again and again. They have no obligation to protect you, and they have no obligation to do anything for you. So let you bleed out. They won't be held responsible for that. Yeah. Um, so paramedics around, arrived around uh, minute eight. Walter Madison, an attorney representing the Rice family, said of the video, this has to be the cruelest thing I've ever seen. Madison said the video depicted officers who showed overwhelming indifference to Tamir as he lay on the ground. Hmm. No one thinks that it is appropriate to try to save him, Madison said. The first person who does is not affiliated with the Cleveland Police Department. This is the level of service that makes people very upset and distrustful of the law enforcement. It is yet another example, and there's so many of them, and people are rightfully upset with law enforcement. You're welcome to share your thoughts, your stories. Join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We'll post the link to the story on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. And, of course, you can take control of the airwaves here. Some good news. Like There's actually a little bit of good news worth sharing coming up uh, on Free Talk Live. And, of course, toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE, or Skype in at username lrn.fm. And now from the Cato Institute, the Cato Constitution Minute. While the U.S. Constitution's first sentence states that liberty is a blessing, our founders didn't feel the same about government. Instead, they wrote the Constitution to limit government and protect our liberties. During the early 20th century, many in power, including politicians and judges, embraced a new theory that the Constitution primarily exists to empower government. Fortunately, over the past 50 years, courts and politicians have expanded protections for some of our rights, including free speech and personal privacy. But many other liberties, our economic freedom to earn a living, our right to private property and more, remain greatly unprotected. Government officials retain vast power to regulate and confiscate our property and dictate economic choices. So the Constitution must remain at the foundation of our future. To learn more, visit the Cato Institute online at cato.org. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a 
powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live, the show where anyone can call about whatever they want. And we do mean anyone. No, I, I'm, I can understand the time cue, but the uh, what I know is wiser than anything else. Like God created one day, I created four simultaneous days in one rotation of Earth. At what point did you become the wisest human, Gene Ray? Well, I've, I've learned everything. When you, when you know everything, there's nothing to know. Okay, well, now, you said you're getting ready to write a book on it. When can we expect to no, see it? No, I, I don't have a publisher yet. Uh, mm. uh, a lot of morning morning touch it. And so, uh, you touch but, it in the morning? Uh, well, it, well, sometimes, not much. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you, G- uh, Dr. Gene Ray? I, I, I'm 78. Well, I told this black lady down in St. Pete, I said, when you die, you're going to come back as a white person. I said, I'm going to come back as a black person. I'm going to hate you, honkies. <laughs> <laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the Internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you'd like. Toll free, 855-450-FREE, and join us via Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. You can join us online as well at freetalklive.com, plus check out Shire Dude's website, shiredude.com. Easy to remember. I like that. Oh, and I should turn your microphone on. Easy to remember, (laughs) hard to forget. (laughs) So, and Lauren Rumpler, a.k.a., well, formerly known as Objectivist Girl. I don't know if that's, is that former? It's not former. No, no. You you know, not former at all. I I, I know I have the the anarchy. You're putting out videos. Well, the thing is, is that, um, well, yeah, but I mean, a lot of people think it's former just because I added the anarcho. I mean, (laughs) I'm still Objectivist Girl. I still, I still say anarchism is a pleonasm. In regards to objectivism, I a think that's what? the only rational. Anarchism is a what? Pleonasm. It what means redundant. Mean? Oh, I've yeah. never heard of that word. It, it means it's an unnecessary word added to it. I see. I think the minarchists should have to specify that they're minarcho objectivists because are rationally. You a, are you a sesquipedalian? I don't know that one. Can you, <laughs> should I know that? No, it's a pretty obscure word. Uh, you know what? But I it's suffer someone who from, likes to use long words. But I, oh, I wow. suffer from eulutheromania. That's for sure. I have pretty bad eulutheromania yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. Obsessed with freedom. Yeah. You, oh, that's what that means? It's yeah. a deep desire for freedom, yeah. Very yeah. cool. So I'm glad you guys are here tonight, coming all the way in from <laughs> uh, Manchester. I was just prompted by one of our listeners that you know, reminded that I forgot. I said I was going to do something. I never did. If I don't write it down, it never, almost never happens, and I didn't. So what I said I was going to do was... Finish telling the story about the guru, the guy who, you know, self-proclaimed courtroom expert character who moved to New Hampshire and was talking a big game about all these court conspiracy theories. We had one guy call earlier. For those of you who are just tuning in, we had a guy call in talking about how, oh, you can get out of a ticket if you just file this with a UCC 207 and write that on the ticket and then file it here and there and 
paperwork, etc. Um, and of course, I invited that person to you know prove it by showing us some video and like actually going through the process and explaining it to people, which of course they never want to do. And so this guy shows up in New Hampshire. This is probably like four years ago now. And he's talking the same kind of game about how he knows how to get out of this and that. And he's been doing it forever in California. And uh, he's going to prove it, et cetera, or whatever. So then he moves to the woods of New Hampshire, is never heard from while he's out there in the woods of New Hampshire. And then one day he leaves a message on Pork 411. Now, for newer listeners to the show, Pork 411 is a messaging system set up years ago here in New Hampshire by uh, one of the early movers for the Free State Project, this idea of moving liberty-loving people together to the same place. Pork 411 allows you to call a phone number and leave a message, and then when you're done leaving the message, the system just basically throws that out to hundreds of email addresses as an mp3 and uh, so therefore if you subscribe to receiving these things you'll get a notice on your phone or however you get notice of having an email and then you can go and play that person's message message back so basically you know within 30 seconds of the person leaving the message hundreds of people could theoretically listen to that message so it's a really cool service anyway this guy dials up pork 411 after months of being you know out of the scene out of the limelight and not that he ever was he just kind of showed up in town and started talking about courtroom conspiracies and so then he goes well and i'm I'm paraphrasing his phone call here i'm such and such and i am leaving new hampshire but i want to offer my knowledge to anyone who wants to receive it before i go so if you would like for me to tell you everything i know about you know all this courtroom conspiracy stuff then i will sit down with you just give me a call and you know he left his phone number and that was it that was the end of uh, of that guy i don't know if anyone ever t- took him up on his offer i don't see why anyone would bother because he never bothered to actually prove any of the claims that he made the you know the whole time that he was here and then mysteriously just up and left and you wow. know offered to reveal all of his secrets that he never proved did anything that's so majestic So that's the only experience we've had thus far, at least that I know of, of some of these courtroom conspiracy guys. There's actually a guy who listens to this show. I won't use his name because he's kind of, I don't think he wants that to happen, but he's frequently in the chat room. And uh, you guys might actually know him, but I won't reveal who he is on the air. He was also, you know, talking about doing courtroom conspiracy stuff and like, you know, putting this stuff to use. And then when he got a ticket, he didn't do it. He didn't just pay go, it off right away. I don't remember what he did, oh. but he he didn't actually try what he'd been talking about trying to do. And he says he's going to do it at some point in the future, but he he hadn't done it yet. So we're still waiting. Anybody that wants to come up and show us how it's done, you know, like you said, Shire dude, you prompt, you have pledged to come to any trial in Manchester where someone wants to try this stuff out. And I would it, love right? to. I'd record the whole thing start to finish. Yeah. Double pledged, that for me. I pledge the same thing here in the Keene area. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think we're going to have to keep waiting on this because it doesn't seem like people are, like, banging down the doors to prove any of these theories. The ones who say it works, they just claim that it works, and then, you know, you have to believe them, which that means that you have to then go try it out yourself and maybe get arrested. Because that's what happened to me the first time I tried this stuff was I got arrested. James is on the line in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live, James. Hey, Lauren, you perked up my ears when you talked about how the government isn't telling me everything about 9-11. And it reminded me once of something startlingly and stupid. I heard one of your co-hosts say that loose change was persuasive. Uh, But first, I'd like to ask you, since you were talking about cops, you know, two unarmed cops on Monday were mowed down in cold blood, along with 10 other people that work for the French version of the onion. But you wouldn't talk about, you know, people over in the Middle East as being like them. Like you talk like, how, how many, what percentage of cops do you think are murderers or, or potential murderers, Lauren? I, um, I don't think that it's my job to judge that. Uh, why do you I ask? I talk about a cop. It commits a stupid killing in Cleveland as if it's representative. Stupid? Of, uh, There's a 12 year old uh, child dead. I That's said it was stupid, stupid to you? I can't, there are no words other than stupid and a lot of other ones I could waste your listeners' time with. But the thing is, my point is, Lauren, you guys talk about cops as if they're a group of armed thugs. You got, who are you guys? Huh? Who are you guys? But you, but you and the two people you're sitting with. That well, you that's just not true, about James. This. Okay, I, true. hold on. That's... I talk. I talk about them. Why don't you address me? I talk about them as. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, why don't you address my point that 
since there was a mass murder in Paris on Monday, you wouldn't okay. talk about all those people that call Allah God as being like them, would you? I can't cover every single murder. People die every oh, day okay. and are murdered every day. This girl. I get where you're coming from, James, and I don't talk about the police as though they are all some group of criminals. Neither do they I. They are individuals, and some of them are better than others. In fact, the ones in New Hampshire, as I mentioned earlier tonight, ch- tend to be of, a, I think, a slightly better, uh, I guess, upbringing or something. Yeah, I, uh, than the I kickbox time. with a few okay. cops on a regular basis. Because your roommate once called them an armed band of thugs. My roommate? No, Ian's roommate. Oh, okay. Well, well I, I mean, you're is, calling me really out for something that didn't happen. Yeah, it's not really appropriate like, to say that she's the same as my roommate. Yeah, right? I'm sorry. We Derek don't is. all share the same ideas. We're not, you know, clones. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was Derek, I'm quoting Derek A. He was probably in the house right now. I don't care. But Lauren, Thanks for the call tonight, James. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's okay. 855-450-3733. Yeah, I mean, people need to be judged individually, though I understand why someone would say they're a group of armed thugs. I mean, to some extent, it's a true statement because most cops do use their uh, the force that they have for thug purposes, like extracting money from you know, I think people. it says a lot about this guy that he said that a 12-year-old's death is stupid. I think yeah. a- a- everything after that didn't matter. There's more coming up here at 855 450 free. You take control. It's Free Talk Live. Did you know by age 50... Half of all men have an enlarged prostate. This means more urges to urinate, longer bathroom trips, waking at night to urinate, or issues with sex. If this sounds familiar, call us now, because we're shipping free bottles of Super Beta Prostate to listeners of this station. Super Beta Prostate is a non-prescription formula guaranteed to reduce the symptoms of your enlarged prostate. It's yours free. Pay only shipping and handling. Just call 1-800-881-1075. In clinical trials, the ingredient in Super Beta Prostate was shown to reduce urges to urinate, improve bladder emptying, reduce waking at night to urinate, and improve quality of life. This Super Beta Prostate-free offer is for listeners of this station, but it won't last. Don't wait. Just call 1-800-881-1075. That's 1-800-881-1075. Call 1-800-881-1075. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. 
Are you getting squeezed by the economic downturn? Hey, you were doing fine. Then, all of a sudden, you're having a tough time paying your family's credit card bills. Maybe you were downsized or even lost a job, but you still owe 10 grand or more in credit card bills. And you just can't afford the minimum payments anymore. We're here to help. We are the Genesis Debt Partners. We know the secrets to negotiate better terms with your creditors. Make a free 10-minute call right now and and learn how we can help you get out of debt. 800-981-7590. If you owe 10 grand or more in credit card debt and you want to learn how you can pay less and get out of debt faster, call right now. 800-981-7590. 800-981-7590. Get out of debt now. 800-981-7590. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You dial toll-free here to bring up anything you'd like. We also can have you join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Joining you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Shire Dude. And Lauren Rumpler. And don't forget, you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features waiting for you there. If you like Free Talk Live, you want to help support what we're doing here, then you can shop with us by going to shop. Dot freetalklive.com. There you'll find links to Amazon. There's Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, as well as Amazon US. You just click into the right one for you, get your shopping taken care of, and Free Talk Live benefits. Amazon will cut us a portion of the sales. So, you know, they're going to make money either way when you shop at, uh, shop at Amazon. You might as well shop in a way that sends some of it to Free Talk Live. It makes a big difference for us when you do that. So please, just take the extra moment, go to shop.freetalklive.com. And if you want to save a little bit of time, just go to shop.freetalklive.com, select the Amazon of your choice, then bookmark the landing page. That's what I do, yeah. And then you can just go back to the bookmark from that point it's on. It's just one click? Yep, it's easy. That's shop.freetalklive.com. We're going to your phone calls and thoughts. Although, real quick, one more comment on collectivizing the police. I'll be be—I'll admit, I'm guilty of doing this uh, in the past, and it's not really a fair thing to do. And I think that when libertarians are speaking in groups like uh, our last caller was say, suggesting that we might do, uh, that, that we should call each other out on that. Like, hey, you know, it's not fair. Some cops are better than others. Not all of them are total thugs. Yes, you can define being a thug as pulling someone over and issuing them a ticket, but obviously the average person doesn't see it that way. So I can understand the critique in using that particular term. I tend to, like when I'm talking to non-liberty folk, um, or muggles as we call them, um, I have to remind myself before the conversation about cops mm -hmm. that cops are human beings. That's right. And they, they have are. they're trying to defend themselves and they're putting their their job is, you know, putting them into a very stressful situation. It's something that I didn't really acknowledge until I moved to New Hampshire. I, when I moved here, I was very angry at the police and uh, it took probably at least a year or two before that kind of melted away and I was able to see them as human beings. And I think one of the things that helped me do that was that, well, we're in New Hampshire where there really aren't that many police. I mean, I'm here in Keene, we've got maybe 40 uniformed officers. I think there's about 200 in Manchester. 200, it's getting to the point where it's going to be hard to know them all. But at 40, it's not hard to at least have, you know, be able to recognize them all when you see them. They certainly recognize us. Mm -hmm. You know, they know who the free staters are and the liberty activists are, at least the ones that are kind of out on Front Street. And so when you get out there and you're doing cop blocking and you're actually interacting with these guys, you're going to have conversations with them. You're going to build relationships with them. Um, I mean, it's to the point now where I go to a, uh, a charity event on a yearly basis here in Keene for the local homeless shelter. There's actually a privately run homeless shelter here in Keene. So there's like the state ones and then there's the private one. And so I go to the benefit for the private one. And one of the guys who's on the board of directors is Tim Peliquin, who's one of the police officers here in Keene. He's been a cop here forever. And he and I have a really you know, friendly, cordial relationship with one another. In fact, uh, this year I sat down, my girlfriend and I sat down with him and his wife at uh, the tables. You know, they got, you know, 10 top tables set up and 
you eat stuff. And so we had dinner with Tim and his wife, and it was really nice. So that's surreal, man. You know, that's something that uh, you know I never would have done in Sarasota, Florida, and likely you never would have done Shire Dude in in California. Absolutely either. not. Yeah. Would you do something like that in New Hampshire if you had the chance to have I've, dinner with a cop? I've sat down and, and talked to the cops. Uh, now Riaz, um, Riaz and I, and uh, Jared in Manchester, we went into one of their meetings that they were having. Mm-hmm. Um, this was pretty. This was like a couple of months ago. Uh, they were having a community meeting about um, or for shop owners in the area and like what to do. It's like a safety seminar, like what to do in case someone's breaking into your store and trying to rob it. Okay. And so we sat through this seminar just to see what they'd say. And of course, they they downplayed um, actually trying to defend yourself. They said, "Oh no, you know, just call the police. Call the police immediately oh, and submit, to, you know, to whatever they want." Yeah. Did you see the guy that? Um there was um, a guy that spoke on the shooting of Tamar. Um, Tamir when it, Rice. Yeah, Tamir Rice, when he um, was first shot. Um, and the police officer stated that, you know, uh, the interviewer asked a good question, which was he had stated that many parents are worried now that, you know, they don't want to let their kids play outside, and especially with fake guns, because they're afraid that they're going to get shot. And the policeman retorted with, you know, just do what we say, and you won't get killed. Let's talk to Rusty in Texas. Rusty, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian Shire Dude and Lauren Rumpler. Hi, y'all. Look forward to seeing, I think, Ian down in March in Austin for the uh, Bitcoin convention. That's right. We will be there at the Texas Bitcoin Conference, second annual this year. Mark and myself will be in, uh, be in attendance. So, yeah, we'll see you then, Rusty. What's, uh, what's on your mind tonight? Uh, the falling gas price, oil price, uh, do you think it's going to re- kind of trigger another recession? Um, oh, I have no idea. From the Fed? I don't, I don't, I'm not sure how falling prices on oil would trigger a recession. I'm not an economist. Uh, I mean, if either of my co-hosts here have an opinion on this, I certainly wouldn't claim any sort of expertise. No. Um, you know, I'm always a little, little edgy about that kind of thing. Um, I think that we'll see a large, um, a large uh, price upturn very soon to make up for it so you, on think, the, it, honestly, you think the price of oil is going to shoot up oh yeah i think that this is a temporary relief has it has it uh, sort of plateaued i haven't been paying attention to it i mean i fill up my tank like once a month so i, I don't i think it it's going to get like, to, I, to the forest within the next year yeah, really yeah i do it feels like it's plateaued for a while okay to some, but that's just a feeling around by the manchester way. but why would that cause i mean rusty why would the price of oil lowering cause a recession well, most of the states that are propping up the GDP of the U.S. are oil producing, and some of those are shale and other oil fields that are kind of more capital and or you need more money to get the oil out of it. You need a high oil price to, to be able to sustain it. So you know, we have a glutton supply, which I think we might. With Venice, Where's the supply with, coming uh, from? I mean, is it because normally it's not coming from the United States primarily, right? So, like, where's all the cheap oil coming from? Everywhere? Uh, yeah. Well, OPEC is, is, I think, ramped up their production, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, the U.S. production has went up, I think, 11 percent uh, since 2008. The Economist had a good article about it, I thought. Most of the OPEC That's probably where you should go for your, uh, your economic <laughs> advice. I mean, look, I'm just a talk show host. I don't claim to know much about economics. I mean, I you know I know enough about supply and demand. I, I've never really studied Austrian economics. I'm just not one of those libertarians. I'm just kind of I'm the kind of libertarian who's like, hey, don't hurt people. I'm that kind of libertarian. And uh, so I, I guess I don't understand why lowered price would lead to a recession. It would seem like that would mean more people would be spending money. I mean, if if uh, if gas is cheaper. People are more likely to go drive somewhere and go to the mall, or you know, if anyone goes to malls these days, uh, I've heard they're having a tough time. But uh, you know, go to the beach or go on vacation. It would seem that lower gas prices would spur more spending. But mm-hmm. what do I know? Well, if, if these people in, in these states are, are getting oil-producing jobs, uh, lose them, then they got on unemployment rolls. That's going to curb spending. Of course, lower gas prices could be a boom for you know. 
lower middle class going out and spending more money on entertainment and stuff like that. And also lower prices across the board. I mean, if gas prices stay down long enough, you'll probably see the products at the store, you know, on the shelf going down in price because, you know, every carton of milk had to sit on a truck, as did every other item in that store. So uh, odds are good we'll see those prices lower. I mean, if a few people lose their jobs, I would hardly say that's, you know, going to cause a recession. But for what it's worth, that's my answer, Rusty, and thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Let's go to Nick. He's in Ohio. You're on Free Talk Live. Nick. I, yeah, I had two questions for you guys. The first one was about the Tamir Rice situation. Uh, one sure. question I've had for a long time that's been bothering me is why this didn't quite get the press hype that the other cases did, given that it was a child that was killed. Good point. Yeah. Um, and, and my theory behind it is the gun theory, that there's kind of a lesson that the leftist media wants us to learn from this, which is that if you go around wielding a gun or something that looks like a gun, you're going to be punished for it. Nick, hold so that thought. I want to bring you back here in a moment. We'll continue with Nick, and your calls are welcome. Toll-free numbers 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Geico presents Fan Mail to a Pig. Dear Maxwell, first off, hope you are well. And I am. Seems like all you do is promote Geico's web and app abilities. And while I really enjoyed your last commercial where you talked about how I could take a photo of my VIN number and add it to my account all via my Geico app, I've got to think it doesn't leave you much time for anything else. Do tell. Sincerely, Miranda Morgan. Well, Miranda, thank you for asking. And this Geico spokespick does have time to do other things. For instance, I do a lot of VIN scanning to add a car just to tap away on the Geico app. In a trial by jury, the primary function of a juror is not to dispense punishment to the accused. It is to protect your fellow citizens from being unjustly deprived of their life, liberty, or property. As a juror, you can say no to unjust laws and prevent government abuses of power by refusing to convict. Legislative, executive, judicial, the fourth branch of government is we the people. Find out more from the fully informed jury association at FIJA.org. Alex Jones here. For the last two years, I've been working with top doctors, nutritionists, and chemists to design a nutraceutical formulation that has truly life-changing health benefits. So many other formulations out there contain toxic ingredients, synthetic additives, and even GMOs. Introducing the all-new Ancient Defense Herbal Immunity Blend, crafted with over 14 key ancient herbs and extracts to supercharge and prepare your body for what experts admit is the most dangerous season of the year. We have rejected hundreds of other formulations in our quest to bring you what is simply the most powerful and comprehensive proprietary formula that we have ever created in the realm of herbal immunity. Experience the benefits of combining over 14 ancient herbs and extracts with exciting new advances in nutraceutical science. Now is the time to secure ancient defense for you and your family. Visit InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-888-253-3139. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. 
This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Toll House Refrigerated Cookie Dough. Who would you bake some love for? Find fun and easy baking ideas at tollhouse.com. Kids love doing arts and crafts projects, especially when you join in. Try channeling all that artistic energy into the kitchen and bake up some creative treats together. Think of your art supplies as the frosting, sprinkles, and decorating gels, and use cookies or cupcakes as your canvas. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Moments remain, but enough time for you if you dial in now. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features there. If you like what we're doing on Free Talk Live, then one of the things you can do to support the show is become an amplifier. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. It's 5 bucks a month. You get all the details at amp.freetalklive.com. You get perks like access to the AMP-only call-in lines, the AMP-only Facebook group, and more. And that AMP money goes to help Free Talk Live get on more radio stations so more people can hear the ideas of freedom. And maybe some of them will make the move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, which is uh, something we've been discussing on and off here throughout the show tonight with relatively new mover Shire Dude in the studio, still within his first year. Yeah, man, just got here in May. You were on the new mover movers panel actually at this year's keenvention as well yeah that was a lot of fun hosted by josie the outlaw that video is up and available for you to watch at keenvention.info it was the very first new movers panel that we've had and i don't know if such a panel has ever been done at liberty forum i don't know if it has liberty forum is a great event it's coming up nhlibertyforum.com you're going to want to be there lauren you're hosting a panel or two or three Uh, two and my own talk very cool. On the so non-aggression principle. Go to nhlibertyforum.com. And again, to help out Free Talk Live, only takes a moment to go and become an amplifier for five bucks a month at amp.freetalklive.com. We got Nick. He's on the line with us in Cleveland. Nick, uh, continue with your thoughts, please. Yeah, I'll just make it brief. Um, Two questions. The first one is, how do you guys think that the gun control debate in our country has informed the publicity, or I should say lack of publicity, surrounding the Tamir Rice thing, because he was wielding a plastic gun, after all? And the second question is, on a different topic, do you think that Donald Trump's comments about gun laws in the wake of the Charlie Hebdo shootings were inappropriate? I'm going to address your first question. Hi, Nick. Um, I'm actually from Ohio, so... uh... I hope you're having fun there, but you should move here Um, way better. And um, but I did want to address your first question. I think that um, I don't think anybody's going to actually switch sides on the gun issue in regards to this. I don't think that the gun issue is really the big conversation. Um, But I do think that that police uh, police wielding weapons um, that quickly, I think that's going to be a huge conversation. Their escalation um, of force? Yeah, their escalation yeah. of force. Um, I think that the way that they've reacted to this, um, I'm sure you saw the gentleman cop that got on um, the news and said that, you know, uh, they don't, basically, there was no remorse from the cop. And it, I believe it was the police chief in Cleveland. And he stated that. Um, you know, if you just do what we tell you, then you won't be shot. Uh, did you see this? Um, I did see that. Yeah. My question was actually about the publicity, though, because it's just confusing as to why this didn't get the kind of attention that, say, the Eric Garner thing did. And my theory right. behind it was that the fact that he was wielding a plastic gun means that the, the media perhaps doesn't want to make as big an outrage around it because they're worried that, that this will in some way condone the possession of firearms or things that are like firearms? Well, first of all, not every... There's a lot of police shootings, you know, a lot of people who are victimized by the police on a regular basis in the United States, and most of them don't get the coverage that Eric Garner got. Agreed. Um, Now, certainly, the situation in Cleveland was a situation with white cops and a black kid, so there was that similarity. But one of the differences that I think is worth mentioning here is the video is not persuasive in the case of the young man in Cleveland. 
I mean, it's hard to figure out what's going on in that video. Lauren and I, we disagreed on what we yeah. thought or what you remembered happening versus what I remembered happening. And it was all shown from such a distance. It's like, so unfortunate. It's not hard for someone who believes the police on a regular basis to watch that video and say, oh, that kid went for his belt. He was going for something in his belt, so he should have been shot. Yeah. And it- we would like to be able to say differently but it's so far away, we can't say for sure what really happened there. And, and so I think that's one of the problems with this situation and why maybe it didn't get the coverage. And they deserved. were really strategic about doing it behind everything that really happened, happened behind the police car where you couldn't really see anything on camera. Um, with with Tim, Tamar, um, with his sister, Tamir. it was out out in public. But um, the, other, the other thing that I... I want to state is because you're you're asking why it didn't get so much publicity. I would actually say that um, some people looking at the Aaron, Eric Garner situation, looking at the Ferguson situation, I think the news is actually a little nervous about reporting these stories at this point. I think they're getting it could a stoke the flames. Yeah, I think we'll find okay. out very soon that there's a lot of pressure from law enforcement and the government and other things to not report yeah, I on these stories. That pressure from the White House. Yeah, like, well, I, I mean, not just that, but like you got to think about these are supposed to be the people protecting people and when you're constantly reporting that they're killing people um that you have a lot of resistance and i think that people are starting to see a lot of movement from the public um in regards to freedom and anarchy and other things and so now um now I think they're afraid to report these things just because it's just going to further the movement and they believe that that's in the in the wrong direction. A reasonable theory. Now, Nick, what were the comments about uh, you said Trump made some sort of statements after the the Paris shooting? I have not seen these statements. Uh, what what were they? Can you summarize? Yeah. Donald Trump on his Twitter account put um, the, in the wake of the Charlie Hebdo shootings uh, put a a tweet that said, fact, the tighter the gun laws, the more violence. The criminals will always have guns. Mm, And and several other tweets to that effect. And this has gotten a lot of negative publicity, I guess, from the left. I mean, what are your guys' thoughts on this? Do you think that the gun debate should be brought into this Charlie Hebdo shooting? Yeah, Um, absolutely. I'm not so sure, um, just because I don't think that the gun debate is honestly on our side. I think the people— Sounds like Trump's on our side. Well, yeah, yeah. but but you got to remember that most people perceive Trump as a crazy man. Um, I, it's unfortunate honestly, that Trump has to be the vessel for this message. Yeah, exactly. So here's the thing: is that I, I, You're I not don't find think, the perfect vessel. I don't, I don't think. think we should have the gun debate just because I feel like we're on the losing side. The people in power are the left right now. But wasn't and everyone those are the people unarmed? That don't want guns. Wasn't everyone unarmed in this situation except for the su- supposed terrorists um, in Paris? Yeah, they were. Because I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure that France has very strict gun laws. Right. I mean, but, I haven't looked at it. Looked but they're it not going to take that into consideration. I mean, but nobody's going to say. But it's exactly say... what Trump's saying here. I mean, Trump has pointed out correctly that the only people with guns in this situation were the people who were willing to fl- to flout the law and to acquire AK-47. Right. But we point this out all the time. I mean, I mean, Ian. Well, now's a good time to point it uh, out again. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with bringing uh, up. Yeah. The gun I debate. mean, it's fine if we point it out, but I don't want a public debate on it because honestly, I feel like we're going to lose this debate. And what, I think it how, would be how a could you huge, lose the debate? Because because they're going to say that guns are evil and that these if these people had never gotten a hold of it, you know, they're just going to make the counter argument that's but they did obviously get a hold of them illogical. In the where I'm not they're defending their argument. I'm just saying <laughs> that they're using fear tactics with ownership well, of guns. Just because somebody's using fear tactics doesn't mean you should shy away from having that discussion. And we've seen this a million and one times, Ian. This is this is the debate we have all the time is that the criminals are going to find it. the the criminals are going to find a way to get guns. What does it look like and when good what, people are not going to be armed? But, but what does it look like losing. to an audience when your answer to a you know a discussion is well, I don't want to have that discussion. No, I mean, no, no, no. no. Good, I want to have right? the discussion. I want to inform people, but I don't want a big statement from the White House. I don't want movement from the White House because it's going to be in the wrong direction. Well, don't worry. The D- White House isn't going to debate you anyway. Nick, thanks for the call tonight. <laughs> I appreciate it. That. Don is on the line in Tallahassee. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Don. Uh, I liked her last comment. Uh, the White House was moving the wrong direction. That's the way they've been moving uh, for quite a while. But actually, They always do, don't they? <laughs> the, answer, uh, the, the previous caller uh, was pretty much talking about and I think Ian mentioned, well, why wouldn't uh, lower oil prices spur the economy rather than hurt it? And actually, uh, I-, I think this is a, a design. OPEC last month had this cartel 
uh, oil producing and exporting uh, had a meeting, and they decided not to, uh, typically what they do when prices start bumping, they cut their production to, to jack the prices back up because, you know, it's typically stayed around $100 a barrel for crude. And, uh, and because of that, American uh, oil producers uh, have uh, had very much success, particularly in, in uh, uh, North Dakota and West Texas. Mm-hmm. And, in fact, they expect that we'll be the largest oil producer by 2020. Really? Because, yeah, because, of, yeah, so it's, American oil producers are going, but here's here's the catch. Uh, the American oil, a lot of it's coming from shale rock. And uh, they have a process called hydraulic fracturing, and uh, it's it's very expensive. In fact, it's controversial. You know, a lot of the, the greenies are... Yeah, fracking is yeah. what it is. They're opposed to it because they make allegations that uh, it's, uh, you know, uh, contaminating groundwater. And John, I'll, if you want to talk further that. about it, call another night because we are fresh out of time for tonight's show. But I do appreciate hearing from you and Lauren Rumpler. Thanks for coming in tonight. Oh, of course. Well, looking forward to making your big announcement when you're ready on that. I am and so excited. Shire Dude, people can get a lot more of you over at ShireDude.com. Yeah, thanks for having me, bud. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program.